Thanks for the support! Di pa just resubscribe for 32 months. Lord dance, Lord dance, Lord dance, Lord dance. Birds are born with no shackles And one feather's my fate Both are in the cage The endless isolation Can't wear down my illusion Someday I'll make a dream unchained Let my heart bravely spread the wings Soaring past the night To trace the primal So now I'll make a dream unchanged Let my heart bravely spread the wings So we pass the night To trace the primal the night to trace the primal light Wrapped in biting wind, hearts will never bleed. Frozen and vanished, out of greed. In their restless dreams, they try so hard to breathe. Pulses flutter and sting. Come
Marilyn just be subscribed for 32 months, almost 3 years out. Chaoshi By the way, um, I gotta, I just, I have to say, I have to say that I just love my friends so much. I love my friends so much. They are so thoughtful and they are so sweet. And Mystic, thank you for getting me a boba that literally just came. It was like perfect timing. So thank you so much. I, I will be partaking, but I really have, I really have like the most wonderful friends in the entire world. I love them so much. <laughs> we can order you boba um really it's it's been like it's been like mystic and krez and effigy like it's it's been like boba boba or coffee for me um 
I'm I'm definitely like uh, I'm like an acts of service gal. Uh, so it's it's just been very sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I did. Um a little macaron! Thank you, Mystic! Thank you so much for the little macaron. I'm so excited to eat it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Mogi is so good. I know it's so sweet. <laughs> uh, there is a boba macaron place by work and I have one client who brings me a macaron every few weeks. It's so sweet. Hey, that's actually so sweet. Oh my God, I love that. They, so um, Zamped, there is like a place where they serve I guess it's like boba, but like it's not very good. I forget the name of it. Um, but yeah, I don't think they don't have like it's not like a full blown like boba place, but they do serve boba, and it's just it's not the greatest. Hi pickle, how are you? Uh, Miki Yuki, hello. Hi, hello. Hi Field of Asters, Captain. Hello, welcome in everyone. I hope everyone had a good weekend. Hi Leon. Hi Aiden. Hi Kelly. Hello, Luigi, Avlin. Hello, hi, Book. Merely, thank you so much for 32 months, almost three years, Merely. You are amazing. Thank you so much, Merely. Appreciate you. I know Deepa is taking, taking her appointment. Hope it goes well. Hello, hello. Also, Deepa, thank you so much for the resub as well. Appreciate you. 32 months. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So this is supposed to be a Honkai Star Rail playlist, and all of a sudden it went into it went into Love and Deep Space. But you know what? It's fine. <laughs> I just I won't mess with it. <laughs> we'll just keep it the way it is. Um, hey, Vertigree, Tarragon, if you're still here. Hey, Rain. Hello. Hi, Nayla. Hi, Karaz. Oh, another thing too. Another thing. Um, check it out. Uh, if you're not in Discord, um, Krez printed out the little mascot of our community. It is the one and only Gator Sits. Check him out. <clears throat> Doesn't he look majestic and wonderful? Isn't he so cute? Look at him! He's sitting majestically. <laughs> so he is, he is forever my desk buddy. I, I really adore him. He's so chumpkin. <laughs> I know, he's so cute. <laughs> he's so cute. I love it. I just like love like glancing over and seeing him. He just makes me so happy. I'm obsessed with him. Um, hi, Babs. Hi, Unique. I heard the Sapphics won this week. They did. The Sapphics won so hard. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, Kay, do you play Love in Deep Space? <laughs> I wish they'd rerun the Honkai col collab at Kung Fu Tea. <gasps> yes! I remember when they ran that collab, Babs. I actually went over to my local Kung Fu Tea and like I hadn't played Honkai Impact yet, but I went and I got the stickers and I was just like, this is so cool. It was really neat they did that. Um, brought me a birthday card with two little Zelda Amiibo cards. Your client sounds so sweet, Kay. Oh my goodness. I love that. Um, how much do I know about Raiden May herself? I don't know anything about Raiden May, really. I've seen pictures, but that's pretty much it. Um, catching up. Oh, you know the song from Playlist. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. Bronzilla walks so Akaswan could run. It's true. Raiden May is, sucks? Oh wait, such? <laughs> I was gonna say, wait, what? Um, they gave the wrong stickers. I don't know what I did with them. I don't know what I did with my stickers either, actually. I think they might be in one of my purses, but I need to go and see if I can, like, find them because I think I, I remember getting them and I think I showed them on stream and I was like, look, y'all, but, like, I didn't know who any of the characters were. But they gave me, like, a bunch of stickers because I think, like, the end, it was at the end of the collaboration. So, yeah. Um, 
Yes, yeah, yes. What Aiden said, please no Honkai Impact spoils. Um, I have been debating on possibly playing Honkai Impact, uh, but uh, I, I'm not making any promises about content because I might actually play it on my own time um, because I am terrified of streaming it because it just seems like everyone that I know that has tried to stream that game has really had a really tough time because of people who backseat, people who spoil, so I, I'm no promises about what I'm planning on doing. I know I started a series on YouTube that I never finished, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. We're just, now this is, this is Raphael's theme. Like we're just, <laughs> just a ton of love. And where's the Honkai Star Rail music? What, how did it go from, hold on y'all. Like, nothing, obviously, I don't mind Love and Deep Space music, but we were listening to Hongai Star Rail music, so. We'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dizzy. How are you? Um, on your own time and at your own pace, yeah. The YouTube side is horrendous with backseating for Hongai Impact. Yeah, I experienced, I didn't really experience, like, backseating when I started my playthrough, on YouTube, it was more of just a lot of people were very pushy. Um, I wouldn't post a video for a bit for Honkai Impact and people would start commenting on my other videos uh, about where Honkai Impact was. Like, I remember when I started playing um, Xenoblade, I got a lot of different like Honkai Impact comments on those Xenoblade videos. And I just felt like it was really rude. Um, like this is a little off topic, but uh, this is, it's really funny because I got a, I got a comment on my um, Akaswan, I think it was my Akaswan video where somebody asked me where Persona 3 Reload was. <laughs> I think they said something about like, when are you, where were the Persona 3 videos? I was like, I haven't even started that game. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. But anyway, um, they go about it awfully, yeah. Hi, Calf, how are you? Streamer, where are our video? It's like, what? Like, I didn't, I haven't, I literally have not even started Persona 3, but I find it really funny that they're like, where are the Persona 3 videos? Yeah, like, I've, I've had Persona 3 in the back of my mind, but like, I have, I have been in such a hyper focus with certain games right now that I feel like if I started playing a game that like in the middle of my hyper focus, like I wouldn't be into it as much. So I'm trying to like, you know, let my hyper focus ride right out. <laughs> and then we will start, we will start one of the games that we were supposed to be starting at some point. I am benched from 14 at the moment, my computer. <gasps> no, Calf, I'm sorry. Hopefully everything gets settled by Dawn Trail. Where's the Stardew Valley gameplay? Not the Stardew Valley gameplay. I um, I have a very unpopular opinion, but Stardew, I really didn't like Stardew Valley. Not that there was anything wrong with the game. Like, I understand why people really like it, but it just wasn't for me. Um, people do not understand the neurodivergent urge to fixate on one thing for 69 years. Exactly, exactly. And I feel bad because obviously, like, I wanted to start my playthrough of Seven Rebirth and Persona 3 Reload, but I am so obsessed right now with, like, Honkai Star Rail because, like, it's, I'm just, I'm really obsessed with it. And, like, it would be so disingenuous of me to start something and not be fully into it, so... Hi, Doro. How are you? <laughs> Stardew Valley fishing is the enemy. Where's the Persona 4 Arena Ultimax gameplay? Not that. You can, I saw you can drink mayonnaise from, from Stardew Valley. Is, so I know, oh, Mystic is actually gonna be playing the new update for Stardew Valley. So if people wanna see like gameplay of the new um, Stardew Valley update, Mystic will be streaming that tomorrow. So please go and check out Mystic if you haven't already. Uh, she's one of my best friends in the entire world. I love her so, so very much. And and everyone needs to go and follow her and go and give her all of the love. And, and maybe she will drink mayonnaise tomorrow. 
I'm very excited to watch her play. Um, what happened to my Raid Shadow? Not the Raid Shadow Legends series. <laughs> uh, you can't drink mayonnaise anymore. Then you can drink peanut. You can drink peanut butter in Sardi Valley. Listen, that's totally fine. Where's the city? <laughs> like, there's so many, so many games that I apparently promised to play. Well, I did promise to play Persona 3 Re Reload, but like I, I'm, you know, we're we're doing our best here. We're trying. <laughs> we're riding. We're riding out. We're we're riding out the hyperfixation. Not the Hearthstone. Oh my, Hearthstone from literally like 10 years ago. Oh my God, I'm dying. This is so funny. <laughs> yeah, Mystic was playing, oh my gosh, Mystic was playing Slay the Princess. Has anyone seen Slay the Princess or like played that game? I actually, I played it, um, I think like, uh, was it during Thanksgiving time last year? And it's such, it's such an, it's such a game. It's such a game. And Mystic was playing it and seeing her reactions were <laughs> so great. So great. That game, it's so wild. It's so wild. You wanna play it so bad? It's, it's a good game. It's, it's really interesting. Lorcana gameplay. Aren't those aren't those really hard to find those cards, Lorcana? I just think you're doing amazing, Lori, whatever you play. Pickle, I think you're doing amazing. I adore you. Um You kinda wanna slay the princess. See, I wanted to kiss the princess multiple times in my playthrough. It was very difficult. <laughs> uh new carnival! <laughs> Okay, but okay, we have we have an Otome and dating sims thread in Discord for anyone that's interested in Otomes or dating sims um, in general. We have a little group of people that we all really like those and we all are super into them. And um, New Carnival has been talked about in that thread and I am like, like I'm not even, I'm so close. I'm like so close to playing it because but like not on stream, obviously. Like I don't think I can play that game on stream. But um, yeah, like, but, I, but I'm like, oh my God, there's so many, I'm playing so many like ongoing games right now. And like, I have an obsessive personality. It's just, it's just, it's not, it's, it's uh! <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm afraid to get into Lorcana because I feel like it'll be really addicting. Lorcana, more like Loricana. Oh my goodness. Lori Kana would just be, I think it would be really cool if it was based off of like the community. So we could call it like the Communusi Kana. Communusi Kana. <laughs> Everyone would have their own card and like their own ability. I, I want it so bad. I think it'd be so funny. Bye Calf, thank you for stopping by. I think at this point I need to consider BG3 an ongoing game because I'm never going to stop playing. That's so valid though. There's so much to do. Yeah, the third beta test sign up for Zenless Zone Zero has started and I already said like way back that I was probably going to end up playing that game. Excuse me because I'm super interested in it. It looks really it looks really great. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you buy the cards to collect them more than any. The art is beautiful. The art is beautiful for Lorcana, but that's once again another thing where it's like super dangerous for me to like get into something like that because my obsessive personality <laughs> would uh, put me in danger. So, hi, Krez. Krez, were you here when we were discussing the little guy, the mascot? Uh, I don't think it would be for for me. Um, oh, Lorcana? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I was telling everybody that you, you, uh, printed out the, the cutest little guy! He's blurring, though. Like, can you stop? Camera, can you stop blurring him? Stop looking at my fingers. Hello? Oh my god. Oh my god. There he is. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Hi, Ina. What do you mean you can't spend all your money on Lorcana? Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I was under my desk fixing cables. Oh, that reminds me of yesterday. Completely random. Thanks for the support. Remember we we send the an at limang putsham na just three subscribed for 14 months. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone having a great time. I think you will do something silly by pulling this one. <laughs> yes, you will build her. Yes, you will put her with Black Swan, Kafka, and Fuzuan. Yes, you will build them as Let's Go Lesbians team. Lol. Sorry. <laughs> it is so true. That is that is my future. Um, maybe not with Fushuan because I don't know when the fuck she's <laughs> she's rerunning. Hey, library gifted eight year is some sub Yeah, they have given apat na put pitong gift subs Thank in the Thank you for channel. gifting to Ina. I love you. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for gifting to her. No worries, Aiden. Hi, Leo. How are you? I know the text to speech read that like so perfectly, but yes, I will be building a Let's Go Lesbians team. Absolutely. But I don't know who to replace with Fushuan. I have to do like another, uh, uh, like another sustain probably. Um, I just don't, I don't know who, but I need to keep up the, uh, the theme of Let's Go Lesbian. So, uh, we will figure it out. Oh yeah, yesterday the cables comment reminded me, I was in the middle of my therapy session and it was so funny because I, I'm, I'm still, I'm getting better, but like my awareness lately has been really bad because of like the meds that I'm on for um, what happened over the weekend. Um, and wait, was it the weekend? I don't know, last week, what happened last week? Uh, so my awareness has been really bad and I was like sitting here talking to my therapist cause like it's telehealth and and she was like looking behind me and like around and I didn't notice, but like Zaya was like eating stuff in my office. Like she was not like not eating, but she was like chewing my plant back there, like my fake plant. And she was trying to chew the basket and she didn't mention anything. But then she went over here, like under my desk and started chewing the cables. And then I lost sound during my therapy session. And I fixed it and I came back and I was just like, I'm sorry, I lost sound. And I was like, it was my cat. And she was like, I kind of figured because I saw her like walking around chewing stuff. <laughs> I didn't notice she was doing that. So yeah. Hi, Remosist. How are you? Uh, probably after Luocha and Jingle. I hope so. March. Hi, Raya. Aren't allergic reactions so fun? That was my first time having like such a bad one. It was, it was a, it was definitely something. How I had a remote session, a remote therapy session. I had to lock my cat in my room with me. Otherwise she unplugs the internet. <laughs> no. Was that Ariel Pickle? Ariel, why? Zio got possessed by Billy. Right, I don't know what she was doing. Like, she was trying very hard to get my attention. It's just like, ma'am, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> but it's okay. The therapy session was saved because I, I figured out what happened and, and fixed it. Um, Max decides to howl super loudly like, sir, please, I'm busy. Our pets are so funny. Ariel doesn't like it when I have voice calls for some reason. She's like, pay attention to me. It's about me. Uh, is this, I don't, I, is it on Spotify, this song? Oh, this one, this video has a picture of Robin. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm excited about Robin. I'm excited about the drips. Ah, oh, oh my gosh, I can't, I'm just, ah. Oh. The pet's like, I'm the only therapy you need. Exactly. I literally mounted my tower under my desk to make piggies can't be cable menaces. Oh my gosh. Ina, I haven't seen the piggies in forever. I want to see the piggies. I love that she's physical. It sounds fun. Right. I, I can't wait to see her combat, um, whatchamacallit, her uh, the, the animations. Because I, I'm curious how that's going to work. Is she just going to beat people with like a her microphone? Um, like, how is... I mean, it wouldn't be like unheard of because I feel like some of the character animations in general are so funny, like Misha with his his mop. So, right, yeah, I I think it'd be really funny if she hit people with her microphone. 
Um, my dogs don't bother my cables. Max is just loud. I love Max. Yeah, Misha's animations are so cute. Actually, um, we're gonna, so if anyone missed it, I did watch the Akaswan. I love how I'm not even calling it by the name of the actual video. Like, I don't even give a shit about what it's called. It's the Akaswan um, animated short. Um, I actually watched it and I reacted to it on YouTube uh, last night. So if anybody missed my reaction, that is up to like my first reaction. But I really want to rewatch it and kind of like delve into the lore behind some of the things because there's so much stuff that happened in that video that I missed. I missed a lot of it because I was like losing my mind about what was going on. So I picked up a couple of things, but I didn't really get to see um, the other things going on because Effigy was mentioning to me that there was like a guy in the background that looked like Scaramouche and I'm like, excuse me? I know it's not him. Like, I'm not delusional, but like, <laughs> I, oh, captions are not on. Thank you, Aiden. I forgot to turn those on. Thank you. All right, there we go. Yeah, I haven't read the description of the, sh of the animated short either, so I want to do that. Um, it's the gay people short. That's all we need to know. It's so true. It's so true. Kat, did you watch it? Call it what it is. Yes. I had to watch your reaction twice because the first time I was like, help, they are hot. And then the second time I could actually pay attention to the other details. Right. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm really excited to rewatch it because I, I didn't, I didn't rewatch it last night. I wanted to save it for stream. So... Yeah, let's let's do the thing. I'm gonna set it up now and we will discuss it and talk about it and it's gonna be great because I know that there's some good stuff in there. Uh, oh my God, I typed in, I literally typed in Akaswan. Like what is wrong with me? <laughs> I love living! Exactly! There's a lot of lore in it, but my first reaction was literally, let's go lesbians! And tuning out everything else. Ray, I, that was the one thing that I pulled out too from, from all of it. I was like, I heard about Ifrit and I, or I saw like his body or something like that. And I was like, oh, that's important. <laughs> oh. Hey, Rod! Yeah, that was the same. Like, I was, like, losing it. And then I know, like, I kept noticing, like, little things. And I was like, crap. I'm missing out on so much stuff because I'm freaking out. But it's okay. Like, I had intended to rewatch it anyway, so. Scott, thank you so much for 50 months. I appreciate you. How are you? Um, let me. Okay. So like I said, I've already watched this. I watched it last night, but this is like a rewatch and we're going to kind of like discuss and like all the things and whatnot. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me read the description. Um, yeah, this description is like, whoa, there's a lot here. Uh, the dual planets were intertwined in each other's tragic destiny, dancing an eternal rondo around a pitch black great sun. In the beginning, one of the planets gave rise to humans. These people looked down and named the land below Izumo. These people looked up and named the world above Takamagahara. One day, uninscribed in the annals, the Yayus, the Yayo Rizzo, sorry for the mispronunciations, because I'm definitely going to mispronounce. Yayo Rizzo, Rizzo, Rozu no Kami descended from Takamagahara. These demonic, de these demonic beasts named Kami, overturned the skies, burned the rivers and oceans, and shattered the land. People realized in horror that it was not an invasion for rulership, dominance, or plunder. The evil Kami came only to kill. As the planet stood on the brink of death, Izumo embarked on a Kami-slaying journey, exhausting the might of the entire country to slay the Calamity Sovereign of Revelation and forging the very first Edict Edge using its bestial body. Giving the Kami a taste of their own medicine, the wielder of these swords can recite the mantra contained with the blade to master the divine power of the Takamagahara and use it to combat the evil Kami and save the masses. From then on, Izumo 
started its long and arduous crusade, exchanging inordinate lives lost for the fall of one commie and another, shattering countless mortal blades to forge the 12 Sentinels. What is going on here? In the merciless fight for survival, Izumo used the might of the Edict's edges to light up their uncivilized world of darkness in less than 10 amber eras, building cities of dazzling neon lights. That distant Takama divine realm, once so far away, became so close within their reach, yet history suddenly stopped there. The existence of the two planets in instantly evaporated, disappearing into nothingness. Nowadays, the past of the border planet Izumo can only be gleaned from the scattered whispers in the universe. Academics hold various views regarding its disappearance, but none can solve the mystery. Izumo's history should have been a long-flowing river, but it was severed in one cut, and all its past and future voided on emptiness other emptiness other shore. Did it ever did it never exist? And was it no more than a fabricated story? Did its histories never occur and it ran aground on the beach of reverse causation? Was it yet another appalling experiment by Dr. Primitive? Or was it a sign of the veracity returning from the end of the cosmos? Only that pitch black great sun knows the answer, yet they remain silent, never speaking, because everything that had happened with will one day regress to the end, and everything that had ended is guaranteed to happen again. The universe undergoes an eternal recurrence under their shadow, and Azumo is nothing more than the footnote for an ellipsis. What does any of that mean? <laughs> like, so it sounds like the world, like, obviously that was a lot of information, but I have not heard of any of this in Honkai Star Rail thus far, uh, unless I missed it. Um, but it does sound like towards the end there that, like, uh things are gonna end and then they're gonna keep like restarting like it's a cycle I guess is is kind of what it, it sounds like um but I I really don't know the context of why that is uh in why that is is here for for this specific short um <clears throat> excuse me theorists say it's the doing of finality or nihility the they could be referring to the Aeon of Nihility. Oh. For some reason, my brain is not exactly processing right now. That's so fair. Hi, Eric. Sounds very familiar. Oh, this is a new relic. Huh. Okay, so this is something kind of related to, like, Honkai Impact, I guess? Black Hole Sun! <laughs> oh. Okay, see, see, like, there's, like, so many, like, little things where I'm, like, oh, my God, I really, it just makes me even more curious about Honkai Impact because I feel like there's, I don't know, I feel like this is going to be similar to, like, the Xenoblade series where if anyone's played Xenoblade, um, you can, and sorry for, like, the comparison again because I compare, like, everything to Xenoblade, but I feel like with Xenoblade, you can play, uh, the games in whatever order you want, or you can play one of the games, but if you play all three of them in the specific order that the games came out, it's more rewarding, and there's little details that obviously you can get by not knowing, but it just makes the journey so much more fulfilling. And I don't know if that's the same with Honkai Star Rail and Honkai Impact, but... Um, it's from certain people's reactions, it does seem like that might be the case. And that's kind of making me want to play Honkai Impact a little bit more just because of that. Hi, Crayon! Uh, they in all caps, when they talked about Nihility in the Bible, they often write God in all caps. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and watch it. Let me turn it up. Actually, I'll turn it. There we go. The remembrance is no different than the sea. Never gaze upon its surface on a starless night. Waiting for someone? <laughs> then, how about a dance? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love the way that they do their animations too. Like it's just so pretty. Like everything just looks My so gaze great. Has lingered on her for quite a while, and tonight I initiate our first engagement. A galaxy ranger, as mysterious as the rumors suggest. A blend of nobility and reticence. Yet, in this nocturnal hunt, the ranger is not the only one who hunts. At this distance, you're more <laughs> enchanting than you seem. <laughs> Without a doubt, she seeks the Watchmaker's legacy. In this game, everyone lies. But memories do not. Like, this is such... Just keeps on getting better. It's like, it's so, like, intimate. Like, I don't know how anyone, like, watches this and they're like... They're not feeling something. Like, it's so intimate. Some people hold on to memories, while others are haunted by them, unable to escape. That is why I took action. I want to know what she is. <laughs> Many were drawn to this feast. The IPC, the Garden of Recollection, Fools, the Nameless, and the Annihilation Gang. They should have been present, but Duke Inferno is dead. He and his children won't be attending. What have you done? Beautiful ranger. Okay, hold on. So, this is is wait. Hold on. Is this Duke Inferno's head? Or hold on. Whoa, hello. Oh no, it's his body. Okay, I thought like I thought it was just his head. Excuse me. Are you asking? This is where things get so... <laughs> I remember, like, watching this last night, I was like, what is happening? Like, she is tearing her up. Oh my god, there's so many like Okay, so there's like a what is it, a dinosaur. <laughs> I what is that? Like, I'm so it looks well it's a bird, probably. And then they have like the whole all of the the metaphors basically for um black swan essentially being like prey. Oh, it's a swan skeleton! Oh, oh my god! I didn't even I didn't even realize that. Who are the Annihilation Gang? See, that's an, that's another question too, is that like My gaze has lingered on her. Does she not remember? Hour. And tonight is our final engagement. A galaxy ranger. No. I've made a grave mistake. Everyone has a past, but for some, their past is a silent abyss filled with those who drowned in it. Annihilation Gang. Annihilation Gang. Oh. Those guys. Those guys. Yeah, like, this reminds me of the Sparkle and Sampo cutscene from the Black Swan quest. 
they released they bleh, 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 bleh. they released more ho more. <laughs> I almost combined Hoyo Lab and Lore. Oh my god, <laughs> they released more Lore. Does anyone have a link? Um, so like when she sees all of them, like that's the thing. So she's supposed to be the one that killed Ifrit. But then she sees all of them and she's just like, oh, those guys, as if she like doesn't remember or something or I don't know. Um, yeah, I've read about what a rondo is. I'm catching up on chat. Um, hi, Stara. Yes, I fucked up. Why would she remember a man she killed? I never do. <laughs> The short goes from their first engagement to their final engagement. Right. She has too many hobbies to remember them all. <laughs> she did say she, that is right. You're right. Oh my God. She did say that in the, the, um, the quest, like when you're doing the quest and she mentions and like, I see, cause I remember commenting. I was like, oh my God, she's got ADHD, but no, she, there's something going on with her memory. Um, the way, the way she snatched her wig. Stop. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, the swan makes so much sense. I was like, was that a dinosaur? Yeah, this is, this was a beautiful, beautiful. It's just totally platonic. Their chest touching and their faces being inches away from each other. This is literally the gayest thing a homoverse has ever done. I can't stop thinking about it. It's so, it's so much... Hi, Tay. How are you? And don't choke on the boob. I mean, Boba. I know. Like, I was like, I was literally losing it last night when I first started watching it because I could not believe it. I was like, what is going on? So she forgets how to cook. Um, Black Swan's voice line about Acheron. Yeah, we'll check it out in the game. Someone has redeemed pronouns, by the way, in chat. If you feel comfy and you would like to go ahead and tell us your pronouns as a way to help normalize introducing yourself to pronouns. And if you are experimenting with new ones, a safe place to do so. Mine are she, her. Uh, she killed too many. That's why she doesn't remember. Um, this is the Hoyo Lab Emanator Special. Um, hold on. Let me play some music while we're... Uh, reading this, so it's not, like, dead-ass quiet. <laughs> um, give me, like, give me, like, a... Nope. Nope. <laughs> the love in deep space is killing me. Uh, hold on, y'all. We gotta get some music going. I don't. I don't want it to be quiet. That's gonna be awkward. We'll use this one. Okay. Um. How you think there's no sexual tension here? I personally would not dance intimate tango with my homies. You know what, people? I th I think a lot of it too is um, denial. <laughs> Because that was, there were just so many like visualizations. There were a lot of visuals to show how intimate this interaction was between Black Swan and Acheron. Like you can say all you want that, oh, well she's doing it because she's trying to, you know, get her memories because she's a memo keeper. Um, and that very well, very well may be the case. But even like when they're talking, she says beautiful ranger. Like it's obvious it's intimate. Like it's intimate. It's supposed to be sensual. Like, like come on. There, like I just, I don't understand how people can be like, there's nothing going on. Like, come on. Come on. Putting on a strap and they'd say she was doing it as a platonic joke. Um. It's a lot of men that can't bear the thought of fictional men not being theirs. And I'm like, if she were real, she would hate you so bad. I'm so sorry to say. No, it's true. I think a lot of it is like people are in this like this whole denial thing about, you know, whatever reason that may be, whether you're uh, homophobic or you are not seeing um, that this isn't specifically for you, as in this sexual scene isn't 
you know, obviously supposed to be for um, the male gay. I mean, like, obviously, I I'm sure there are straight men that are uh, attracted to this, but uh, it's it's one of the things where, like, it just feels like so much denial because if this were happening between, like, you know, um, if this were heterosexual, basically, like, there would be no denial that there is something going on. There's definitely something happening here that is not platonic. To me, it looked like two roommates dancing. Exactly! <laughs> Trying to figure each other out, but I choose to believe it's sapphic power. I mean, it is. Like, it is. It is absolutely sapphic power. Twitter teach... Bunch of people dance into their roommate while touching each other faces and kissing their hands like all the homies do. Right. And even like it was said to at the very end with the heavy breathing, like these visuals are there to like paint a picture. Um, and like it's this is th that was very, very like, you know, it was very sensual. Like, I don't know how people can deny that. Um... Mm-hmm. Also, this is semi related, but I saw it and I feel like I need to say it. I've seen someone call this queer baiting, and I need to reiterate that we need to leave our standards for queer representation in the West at the door. If we want representation, we need to realize that it doesn't mean um, just a character saying, I'm gay. This isn't even subtext. We got to stop self censoring ourselves. I feel like, see, here's the thing I feel like people don't know what queer baiting is <laughs> because. If it's, okay, here's the thing with queer baiting. It would be like, I'm gonna use um, Beidou and Ning Wong for an example from Genshin. For anyone that doesn't know about that particular ship, it's it's very popular and there's a lot of different like things going on there where it's like very obvious that, that they're kind of tiptoeing around the idea that they are together and they're in love with each other. Um, and using them as an example, it would be queer baiting if they did all of this and then at the end or at some point in time, they're like, by the way, um, Ning Wang is like married to a man or something like that's queer baiting, like at the at the very end or something like that was dropped. Like there is nothing that's happening right now with Acheron and Black Swan to where there there is that. Um, and yes, just as Aiden said, there are obviously limitations because this is something that they do have to kind of be careful about because of certain laws. And I don't, I don't know, like it's already been known too that Hoyaverse has, has like queer themes in like Honkai Impact. I mean, I just, I, it's just, it's baffling. <laughs> it's baffling to me. Um... Yeah, exactly. Supernatural is a perfect example of queer baiting. Absolutely. Originally said after reading letters from a woman to another talking about how she misses her lips that they clearly are very good friends. That is, I cannot. Um, I also think it's a slap in the face to how other countries outside of the West do to show their representation. It can be so beautiful, poetic, and, and profound. Exactly. Um, kind of similar to the Bayonetta situation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously no spoilers for Bayonetta, but Bayonetta used to be one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite series because of all of the, like, the metaphors and, like, the, the things going on in, in that game. Um, and then the final game came out and I was very disappointed, um, about that. Uh, I didn't even play it, but I just, like, I heard, like, and I should, obviously, like, I shouldn't, I, I'm a very firm believer that, obviously, if you, um, want to have, or you, like, have an opinion on something that, like, maybe you should try and experience it, but I basically saw the ending, and I was like, what the fuck? So, yeah, that is, that is a perfect example, in my opinion, of queer baiting. So... Hi, Kate. How are you? 
People lack media literacy and can't comprehend that someone can be something without explicitly saying it. Right. Exactly. But I really do think that people simply do not understand what queer baiting is. Because this, what's going on here with Black Swan and Acheron is not queer baiting. Like, I just, I'm very, very confused about that. <laughs> Uh, are very upfront with their sexuality, but then refuse to accept any sub subtle implication as proof unless it's spat in their face. Right. Hi, Redlocks. Exactly. Exactly. Queer coding. Absolutely. Um, you just woke up from a nap. How was your nap? This, I'm sure this, this time zone is like, is, is killing you, Kate. <laughs> Not in before ratio. No, Akron gets married to ratio. No, they're like it's it's obvious. Like that's not gonna happen. Honkai is pretty explicit, explicitly queer. Yeah, that's another thing that's mind boggling to me too. Is that how can people be like, no, there's nothing here, and it's just like Hoyaverse has shown to already do that in their games and in their like in in what they make. Like, how can you try and deny that? I mean. I really don't understand it. And besides, you know, like people being homophobic or people wanting something for their for, for themselves and it's not for them. So, I don't know. But yeah, absolutely. I I do think that it is there is there is so much queer coding in Hoyaverse games. So much. And I feel like some people just don't want to see that and it's it's unfortunate. Um Oh, you got 4 hours of sleep. Oh, Kate, were you were you rewatching all of the uh the the short from last night? Do you think a lot of deniers were once gaslit into thinking that tango involves putting your lips in someone's lips because I have no other explanation for that level of denial? I mean truly. I just genuinely appreciate that Hoyo doesn't allow itself to be pigeon held to heterosexual relationships as the only example of love same. Um, hey, wow, PNG. Hello, New Year. Just wanted to say I appreciate only talking about queer themes in Hoyo games. We feel a lot of people don't fully explore that side to them. Aw, thank you so much. Um, being queer is a big part of my identity, and that is, like, something that I love about Hoyoverse games is that there's, there's so much more to their storytelling. It's so deep. And I love, I love that there are these queer themes in there that, like, it's just, it just resonates a lot with people. And I think talking about it too is, is really important because, like, it's there. It's, it's for sure there. It's, and it's very important. Um, you think there was something, but see, see, like, she couldn't stand Luca, though, <laughs> in the first game, so... Uh, I just don't get why when straight relationships are implied it is seen, but when LGBT relationships are implied, some people call it just headcanon. It's because it's a, like, like I mentioned, it's a lot of people who are being homophobic or they are people who want something for them when it's not for them. So, <laughs> comfortable with being the primary romance option for femmes, get so uncomfortable when femmes say, I'm not, I, uh, yeah, I'm not for you. Absolutely. The West has actual good queer media rep. Right. Like there's there's definitely there's definitely some stuff out there that's just like, oh my god. I've talked about that before in the past too, where like I it's just it's just a whole thing. It's just a whole thing. Um have lived with hetero relationships as a standard. Everything else has to be proven to them, and even when there's proof somehow it's still questionable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, I feel that as well, that Bayonetta was was totally queer, and I just, I don't know. And it's it's not that, just because she, trying not to spoil certain things, um, and that's not to say that, you know, what happened at the end was, like, like, she still, like, she still could be queer, but I feel like the way they went about it didn't really make sense to me, because I feel like the writing for the, especially like for the first game, like it just didn't, it didn't make sense. Like, I feel like it was one of those things where they're just like, we gotta nip this in, in, a, in a bud now, now that we've, 
you know, we've gotten the gay people. We gotta nip this in a bud. And it just is very upsetting. Uh, darker themes fits queer representation, something that I feel even the West struggles with despite its self-assigned superiority on the subject. Acheron is an eldritch horror and she's still out here being a girl gizzer. Yes, I love that too. I, I think I mentioned that when I first started playing through Honkai Star Rail's story. I was like, this is incredible. Like there's so many like themes in here, like darker themes. They're not afraid to, to kind of like, I, how do you describe it? Like, they don't want to shy away from themes that can be really heavy and and also integrate that with their characters. And I love that. I, lo I love that so much. I feel like it is extremely fitting for the type of uh, setting that we're in, which is a sci-fi setting, because there are so many themes to explore when it comes to different planets and different cultures, um, different ways of life, um, the basically the repercussions of uh going to different planets and not understanding like i just i think there's so much there and i really love that there are just so many themes in honkai star rail that like they could they could really do so much with it and i'm excited about about the future of the game uh I wouldn't say they're homophobic, but it's a byproduct of living in a heteronormative society. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some people that are homophobic, though. Like, I've seen it in my comments um, on YouTube, on TikTok. Like, we have seen some homophobic comments. Like, people are straight up, like, hateful. Uh, maybe some people just want to see characters die because the only constant about heterosexuals in Honkai is that one of them is dead and the other is a sociopath. Wait, what? Uh, I'll make my character a male to project, but otherwise I'm supportive of whatever the creators designed them to be. Yeah. Deserve queer ships because they are toxic, but will gladly accept the same toxic tropes for, for straight ships. Yeah, and I feel like there's, obviously there's like certain things where, like, I mean, I, I think it's important to call out any toxicity in relationships because that can become like the norm for some people and obviously, but you know, it's a discussion to be had. But yeah, I agree. When you are okay with one type of toxicity because it is from a heteronormative perspective, um, from a straight ship and you're calling something else toxic, like if it's the same thing, like that's, you know, don't, not okay to do that. Uh, you don't understand the dream scene that was teasing Branya and Zila was just for the memes. They're totally straight. It's so funny. That aren't really toxic, but people twist it that. That's true, yeah. Hi, Zelda. How are you? All right. Um, the Emanator special. Someone said that there was some lore in this. So... I kind of want to discuss about emanators too, because like I'm still trying to understand some of like the the uh, little things in Honkai Star Rail that like I'm um, I haven't delved too much into because I know a lot of people have said like uh, some stuff about emanators and things about the pasts and stuff are more in simulated universe, and I haven't really had the time to kind of sit down and read about all of that. But, um, yeah, the emanators are, I know that supposedly Acheron is an emanator, correct? And the emanators are, like, I wouldn't, they're not, like, gods, right? They're more similar to, uh, well, I mean, I guess, I guess the Archons and Genshin are, are gods. I'm trying to figure out, like, what, how to compare them. Oh, it explains it. Okay. I didn't know it explained it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'll be the acting chief. Oh, look at Donna. He's so cute. Oh, they're more like gods chosen. Okay. Aeons are like the gods. Okay. Um, I'll be the acting chief editor for this issue to educate you on some essential information. Trailblazers the information trailblazers you mentioned wanting to learn more about emanators oh this is okay cool this is an entire thing about emanators um if mortals receiving the grace of aeons and grasping the power of paths are viewed as a singular shattered foam then the mighty feats of aeons driving their paths onwards can be likened to 
a towering tsunami that engulfs mountains. In this empty stellar vastness, a small number of favored mortals can also draw upon the power of the paths. Ah, uh, okay, that, that explains it right there. Yeah, basically they're given gifts from the aeons. Okay, yeah. Uh, while not completely subservient to the Aeons, Emanators are as good as emissaries of the Aeons' wills in everyone else's eyes. Um, how to become an Emanator. Different Aeons have different attitudes towards their Emanator. You know what I should do? Oh my god! I should make a poster board connecting everything! I feel like there's so much lore! Oh my god, do I do I have a poster board right now? I absolutely do not. <laughs> Hold on, we're going on Amazon really quick. I need to order I need to order some poster boards. Give me a second. We're gonna do we're gonna do this. This is probably so weird. <laughs> um, how big what is 12, 20, 22 by 28? Is that really big? We're getting, we're getting a multiple post poster boards. Yes. I feel like we'll need it. Yeah, we'll buy like multiple ones. 22 by 28. Is that huge? Does anyone know? I'm trying to do like measurements in my brain, but it's not, that's not like huge, but it's like, it's like pretty big. Me acting like I know how big that is. I want it large enough to where people can see it. Because I'm going to stand it up too. I can't, neither can I. I'm like, hmm. 24, 24 inches is two feet. 24, 20, so, tw okay. 28, 22 by 28. Twenty-two by twenty-eight. I'm gonna get this one. Okay. All right, and I'm getting um. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take notes today, and then when the poster board comes, uh, we will be we will be transporting our notes to there. Everything will be here tomorrow. So for tomorrow's stream. Okay. <laughs> Until then, I'm gonna I need to take some notes. Not to be extremely neurodivergent and weird, but like, I'm so invested in this lore and like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I just. That might be a good size. Okay, yeah, I went ahead and I got it because it seemed like it was gonna be big enough. All right, so, emanators. Emanators are like, is this a good comparison? Like demigods, like they're kind of, no, that's not a good comparison because that would, that would mean that they're birthed by a god, but more like they're given, they're chosen. Okay. Um, where were we? Kind of. They're more like angels, like a prophet. They're the warrior. They're the warriors of light. They're sort of like demons. Who else? Who who else is a emanator that we know of? I don't have a doc lore, but I do have adventuring analysis stored in my brain just in case. I feel that. I really understand. Herda. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. Example. Herda. Acheron. Okay. Uh. Wait. Jingyuan is a is an emanator. 
Fantilia was an was an emanator? Did I miss that? Ron May is an is an emanator? What? A hundred members of the Genius Society are emanators? Girl, what? Okay. Only heard of that we know for sure. And Acheron, too. Hi, Xylax. How are you? Kate Middleton is an emanator. That's where she went. She's actually, she's got a job to do as the em ed emanator of something. Okay, Fantelia. Fantelia as well. I need to, I really need to, like, go back and... I don't know. I gotta go back and... Because oh, I'm like, when did they say that Fantilia was an emanator? But to be fair, like, I was really... I was really going through the Honkai Star Rail story, like, super fast. <laughs> um... They said all the geniuses are emanators? Okay. Xandar and Herda are emanators of Noose. Fantelia, emanator of Nook. Acheron, emanator of who the fuck knows. <laughs> oh, she's an emanator of destruction. He's an emanator, but if I recall correctly, it said that Arbiter Generals are all blessed by Lan, which could be interpreted the same way. Huh. I wonder if more of this information, too, is in the archive. Like, what is it called? The archive thingy, my bob? Uh, okay, so... Different aeons have different attitudes towards their emanators. So the method through which they grant, I love, they're capitalizing, they're capitalizing their pronouns. It's, it's this is so, I love this. Um, they grant power and the extent of the power also vary significantly. Some aeons regard emanators as in extensions of themselves. Some aeons have no intention of creating emanators, and there are even aeons who just do as they please, which is, they just do the whatever the fuck they want. That's so valid. I too. Well, actually, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, I too would do whatever I want, but that would, no, that would not be good. Um. Used to lay... Uh, OG Beta Jingwan used to be labeled directly as an emanator of the hunt, but it was deleted. Oh, okay. Hi, hi Hex, how are you? Um, this lore drop was so confusing. I read it when I woke up and, I, <laughs> and I'll need to digest it. Right, I'm taking notes right now because I'm like, hmm, hmm. Uh, Ron May's trailer teaser. Oh, she wants to, that makes that, okay, that's sounding familiar is that Ron May wanted to become an emanator. The messenger in the train is an emanator? Wait, the one the one by the mirror thing? Do you want to be hard power crap so they couldn't make him an emanator? Wait, what? You're gonna get an E6 J Lu! I'm so excited for you, Tay! That's so exciting! Oh she wait. So she did she wanted to be Okay, okay, okay. So Ron May didn't want to become an emanator, she wanted to become an Aeon, which also makes sense for her that she wanted to basically be God. Okay. Cat Smith <laughs> We gotta go through the archives. Like I keep saying we need to do a stream. Maybe we'll do some of that today. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see how the day goes. But I it's it is it is past time that I I in ingest some of this this lore so all right um emanators blah, blah, blah. some ands regard emanators as an extension of themselves i kind of want to like note that because i think that's interesting that like some of the um the aeons they the aeons obviously act very differently uh and they view their their emanators differently than like, they, they all interact with their emanators in different ways, basically, it seems like. Thank you, Mystic! Was the Swarm King an emanator? The, the big-ass bug? Huh? The fucking bug! 
Uh, do I know any Propagation Swarmler? No, I, I think I just unlocked that on, what was it, Friday, y'all? I can't remember. I did a little bit of it. I started it on Friday, but like I was so out of it on Friday. So, um, I like our emanators so far. Heard a <laughs> hacker on Fantilia bug. <laughs> and maybe Jingyuan. Dead. Someone needs to play. Yeah, Pickle, that's what I was saying. Is that like, I've done a little bit of simulated universe, but like, but every time I do it, I'm doing it to get the weekly done. And so like, I haven't really paid attention to what's like happening in there. So I definitely need to, I need to go and actually like spend some time and like read all of the stuff that's going on. Hey, 5%, I am, I'm half. You always skip the text too. Yeah, like I don't in, I don't really want to, but usually I'm like in a rush to get it done for the weekly. So yeah. Imagine playing Simulated Universe and paying attention to the story. I really want to because I really want to learn more about the Aeons and like the paths and all of this. Like it's so interesting to me. I've always been really interested in, in mythology throughout my life, especially like the mythology surrounding like like gods um so like greek mythology um uh egyptian mythology like it's always been it's that's always been so fascinating to me so this is all really it's it's, it's making me excited hey sirene good afternoon to you you're always last week going for those jades yeah um, the really neat thing about Simulating Universe is that it has its own archive, so you can just read. Yeah, that's right. That's true, too. That's why I need to go. I really want to go in the archives, and, like, we need to just do a deep dive. <laughs> oh, it makes you too angry. That's so fair. That's so fair. Yeah. Okay, so I took note of that, that the interact with their, the Aeons interact with their Emanators, like, differently. Um, Emanators status. Factions that worship martial strength will view the Emanators status as a banner, using it as a show of their influence. Factions that worship martial strength will view the Emanators status as a banner, using it as a show of their influence. However, some forces view the acquisition and control of information in high regard, intentionally concealing the Emanators' existence... There are also emanators who blend into the crowd, pretending to be ordinary mortals before they reveal their powers. But there is one undeniable fact. Along each path, the distances that emanators stride far surpass that of their mortal path-striding counterparts. And so, and on this journey, their mere existence becomes the drive of the continuation, extension, expansion of their paths. So, basically, from what this sounds like, um... There's like certain, I guess there's certain factions that do worship uh, the Aeon. And if there's an emanator that they know exists for that specific Aeon, that faction will kind of like almost, I guess, worship that emanator. Um, but then... However, some forces view the acquisition control of information in high regard, intentionally concealing. So some people hide the existence of an emanator. So there's some emanators that we don't actually know that are emanators. Um, along each path, the distances that emanators stride far surpass that of their mortal path striding counterparts. On this journey, their mere existence become. And then, like, basically, basically, there are a lot of emanators that are, like, they make it their entire personality, I guess. So, um, there's an Aeon of Abundance in the basement prison of Lafu? What? Golden Gears isn't necessarily easy, but you have to learn how to use. Oh, okay. You have to do your job. Oh no, Captain. This will this VOD will be up on YouTube. So I know Don Hunga teaching us right now is so freaking cute. 
And yeah, hi Ashley. It's already up on YouTube right now if you if you missed my reaction. I actually reacted to it last night. Today was just a rewatch, but um, it is up on YouTube right now. So, <laughs> all right. Rumors about emanators across the universe are rife, and they should not all be believed. Oh, here I will list some reputable sources that may hopefully educate you. Oh my God, thank you. He really said, don't believe the fake news. Oh, here we go. Here's Fantilia. Um, Antimatter Legion. A Lord Ravager is both the emanator of Nanook of Destruction and commander of the Antimatter Legion. For those capable individuals who obey the blemished ones, will or even willingly step onto the path of destruction. Hold on. We're writing this down. Okay, emanator of... Destruction. Um, for those capable individuals who obey the blemished ones, will will or even willingly step onto the path of destruction. Okay. Uh, the animals spare their lives and delay their annihilation. Endowed with the power of destruction and twisted by it, these creatures manage to endure the glance of a god without dying from the power, then turning into Lord Ravager. Lord Ravagers, dreaded by all. Okay. It is said that there are a total of seven Lord Ra. There's seven? Seven Lord Ravagers under Nanook. Yeah, so we only know of Fantilia. Hold on. I need a highlighter. <laughs> seven. Okay, and then... Oh, is it too loud? Hold on, I'll turn it down. Yeah, this is just, we're just having background music, so it's not like dead ass quiet besides me talking. Hi, Froppy, how are you? Oh, okay, so there's some that we do know the names. Um, they are executioners of destruction's will. All artists of war, every inch of their being honed into ultimate burning weapons. They bring out the apocalypse that traverses stars, imposing the absolute conception of destruction via myriad ideals. Okay, the Shianzo Alliance. In an ancient era of legend, Shianzo ships were tasked with voyaging across the stars to reach for the miracle medicine of immortality. After wearing away its conviction and shape over the long years, the Shianzo eventually encountered Yaoshi. However, all that, the all that the bestowal of immortality brought upon them were sorrows, poverty, endless war, and death. It wasn't until land the Aeon of the Hunt returned from the abyss. Using gravity as bowstring and stars as arrows, land shattered the ambrosial arbor and put the wickedness of abundance to an end. Oh, we're taking notes about um, stuff because I'm, I'm actually, I bought a poster board um, so I can keep track of um, all of the, uh, the lore and, uh, I can understand things better and, and then we can like start theorizing and connecting things and whatnot. So, because I'm like, there's certain things that I still don't really understand that well. So that's why we're doing it. Um, they've mentioned that the Ravagers are planetary level. <clears throat> but I refuse to believe they're that strong until they actually provide proof. Huh. The, mem the memo keepers are all emanators of remembrance, so that random one hiding in the train counts. Where does he say that? Okay, um. Hang on, I've got stuff in my mouth. Oh, the memo keeper thing isn't true. Welt says it. I think he mentions it in Panacone, but I'm hesitant to take that as fact because it's Welt. Okay. So it's like, it's basically like hearsay. We don't know for sure, even if he did say it. 
Okay, after Shanzo returned to the Righteous Path, it's, it formed an alliance under the guidance of the Hunt and formed a powerful army known as the Cloud Knights. The Alliance's goals were to patrol the world and eradicate all abominations of abundance and put an end to the corruption of the undead. The generals who command each Shianzo, along with the Marshal of the Alliance, take up arms themselves, embarking on the irrevocable path of pursuit, becoming the sharp arrows of the rainbow. <gasps> the family! The concept of harmonic strings is defined in the Harmony Hymns. They, I need to take, I need to make sure that I'm writing this down as well because I don't know a ton. I feel like I missed so much of the story during my initial playthrough because I'm like, right! Well, I think there's, I think some of this too is, like, we learn about it through other things in the game and not directly in the main story. Like, I think some of this is in, like, maybe simulated universe um because yeah like there's there's a lot of information and i definitely don't remember a good chunk of it of course like my memory is garbage anyway but i do think that maybe some of this is coming from other places as well so emanators is a black or black wait hold on black swan is an emanator of gay rights absolutely um Okay, so, wait, I was going to write stuff down. The family. The family. Uh, the concept of harmonic strings is defined by the harmony hymns. They are the multiple embodiments of, how is it pronounced? Is it Zypi? The great one. Um, the down-to-earth virtues that enable harmony. Zippy, Zai, everyone hydrate. Thank, thank you. All right. Um, one, regardless of whether you place yourself under the family's rule, the Aeon will look favorably favorably upon you as long as you carry out these good deeds. On worlds ruled by the family, members often gather in large groups to engage in virtuous acts and play harmonious music. The thousands of tiny ropes come together to form a unified string, welcoming the embodiment of harmony to manifest on the mortal plane. The family never shied away from promoting the great names of the embodiment of the thousand-faced god, such as Alanev, the commander of the eternal centurion, Dominicus, the wisher of the harmonious choir, Constantina, the singer of the Pentecostic theater, and Beatriz, the merrymaker of the blissful ball. However, if you have witnessed their radiant presence, going beyond the boundaries of the family. Some also argue that the harmonic strings are nothing short of the emanators of Zype. These do not follow any specific mortals, but are facets of Zype and can assume the form of any family member when necessary. Really? Okay. Here comes the IPC. <laughs> As the largest financial body of the cosmos and a disciple of the Amber Lord, most believe the preservation's emanators exist within the IPC. However, according to the Express's current data bank, Intel, only two emanators of preservation are confirmed. Teravan Keen of the Seven Board of Trustees member and Diamond, chief of the strategic investment department. So Diamond is confirmed an emanator? Okay, and Tara Van Keen. Um, information on others are locked behind layers of encryption with no other sources available. Interesting. Uh named all their employees after gemstones, right? It, it seems like it, or they're like code names. 
I'm thinking maybe Diamond is who gives other higher-ups, like, adventuring gemstones. Yeah. 2.5 hours? Oh, no, Babs. I hope it goes quick. I checked the line about... Oh, the line Welt said about the memo cubes. It's now obvious to me that it's not a fact. He doesn't even say that memo cubes are emanators, only that there are rumors about the emanators of... Oh, he says there are rumors about the emanators of remembrance having no physical bodies. Okay. All right. Um, there is another group named the Ten Stone Hearts, an elite team reporting directly to Diamond. The official title within the corporation of this role is called Non-Performing Asset Liquidation Specialists. This is about the members that we 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 know of. Its members' origins are varied. Its responsibilities differ, with multiple people's records shuffling in and out of this role. The only common commonality they share is that they were personally selected by Diamond and conferred with the name of and status of Cornerstone. Some credible sources suggest that the Ten Stone Hearts have demonstrated unbelievable power related to preservation on certain occasions. Whether this power originates from the members themselves or the Cornerstones they possess remains uncertain. However, since Diamond is one of the few confirmed emanators of preservation within the IPC, this power is likely related to that fact. Okay, so the um, the non-performing asset liquidation specialist, uh, the Ten Stone Hearts, basically. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of um, the, um, oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue. If anyone's seen Sailor Moon, uh, they are also named after gemstones. Like, that's what that reminds me of. Um... Yeah, adventuring, Topaz. The Cornerstone is probably what... I need to rewatch the trailer, too, that was shown for 2.1 because I feel like I missed a ton of stuff in there because it was also so early for me. I was, I was like, still, like, heavily medicated. Like, I just... I was not able to pay attention to so many different things in the live stream, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, so it seems like it seems like what's happening is that Diamond is picking everybody for the ten stone hearts and he's giving them gemstones or cornerstones. Um, and these are imbued with like basically powers, and that's how they're so powerful, the ten stone hearts. Seems like. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Uh self annihilator. Self-annihilators are a group that lost their meaning of, of existence when they carelessly stepped into, what is that, nine? The Nihility Shadow. I need to read about this one, too. Actually, hold on. I have to take some notes about the, about Diamond, too. Okay, and then um, I feel like some incredible sources just the Ten Stone Hearts have demonstrated unbelievable power related to the uh, Um, Does Topaz have a stone? If, well, it says right here that um, he gives them cornerstones, uh, the Ten Stone Hearts. Right? No reason. Only common is they share is a personally selected and conferred with the name and status. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. So I'm confused. So it says that the corners, the cornerstone conferred with the name and status. So cornerstone is a status and not actually like a physical. Because I know that people were saying that there is a stone in um, the trailer. Hold on. Wait, no, no, no. It says whether their power originates from the members themselves or the cornerstones they possess. Okay. That, that, it's kind of confusing because it says that, that 
conferred with the name and status of Cornerstone, Cornerstone as if it was a title, but then it says at the bottom that that they could their power originates from um, either from the members or the Cornerstones they possess. So does that mean that it's a physical thing or that like he's Diamond is like dubbing them Cornerstone, which is essentially like imbuing them with power? Um. Hi, Raspberry. Welcome in. Tobas was probably going to use the stone during the Bellabog interlude before Branya stopped. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I know that. I know that there was. It, it's both. Okay. It sounds. <laughs> Nine just likes mommies. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking about the uh, this new thing that dropped from um, on Hoya Lab, which is like a bunch of lore. Oh, they mentioned adventuring lost his adventuring. Yeah, I know people are saying adventuring was holding. See, I missed that completely when I watch when I was watching the trailer. And ratio said it. Okay, okay. See, yeah, the way that it's like it's written here, it like kind of confused me. So it's both. So it's it's a status that's given um by diamond, and then it's also like a physical, like an actual stone. Or rather, maybe not a, not a status, like a title, rather. IPC Emanator Lore. It's really interesting. This is super interesting. Uh, okay, this power is really... Okay, so back to Self Annihilator. Self Annihilators are a group that lost their... Wait, hold on. I was supposed to... I'm on page two already. Excuse me. Self Annihilator are a group that lost their meaning of existence when they carelessly stepped into the... Into nine, the Nihility Shadow. The shadow of the Nihility covers the stars equally, and self-annihilators may form in any world. These poor souls share one thing in common. Their various ex existential properties, such as corporeal body, mental cognition, and personal memories, will gradually fade. Did they did they already say that Acheron was a self-annihilator? Or no? How much you want to bet the CEO of IPC is an emanator? Um, they already, it already says up here. I mean, well, actually, we don't know who the CEO is of, of, uh, wait. Oh, yeah, we, I guess we technically don't know who the CEO is of the IPC. We only know the board of trustees member and then Diamond, who is the, the chief of the strategic investment department. So yeah, and it does say that information on others are locked behind layers of encryption. So there could be more emanators of preservation, but we don't know about them because they're hidden. So um there's uh there are also everyone's higher up, yeah. Okay, um, wait a minute. So question, did, because this right here, this sounds like Akron's a self-annihilator. Doesn't it? Such as corporeal body, it says there are various exist ex existential properties such as corporeal body, mental cognition, and personal memories will gradually fade away in their journey of self-annihilation. Like, it sounds like she's a self-annihilator. What? Some self-annihilators have their skin turned into something like rotten wood. 
full of holes and scars. Some have their endocrine system disrupted, being becoming unable to distinguish between pleasure and pain and turning numb to everything. <gasps> Some lose their memories, others lose their senses. It's as if they have been deprived of the meaning of their lives by some entity and can only keep watching in dreams and illusions as their own form disappears into a black hole at the end of the horizon. Fuck. I need to write this down. Oh my God, oh my God. This is, this is something. I think she's a good guy, though. The way she reacted to Firefly towards the MC. Yeah, she was like, I can't do shit about that. That ain't my... That ain't my place to step in. Um... But that's so sad! She's depressed! <laughs> like, it, sound, it sounds like self-annihilators are... <laughs> are, like, depressed individuals. <laughs> Like, they, they're like, we don't know the meaning of life anymore. Like, we've lost the meaning of life. We can't feel pleasure. Everything is numb. They sound depressed. They got depression. Of existence. But it says of existence when they carelessly stepped into nine. Like what? I want to learn more about nine. Nine sounds awful. This music is taking me out. What is going on? Okay, um, this is nine in the picture. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> oh. Go through to willingly follow that path. Like according to the video, when her memories cut swan like Swiss cheese as she tried to collect her memories, says a lot about her, right? Like she looked in there and she was like, oh shit, this is, I need to get out of here. Until I'm an emanator. <laughs> I'm going to start calling them emanators of depression. Unfortunately, Aeon of Therapy. <laughs> the Aeon of Therapy help. Oh. I'm dying. Have you read the description under Akron's video? It also talks a lot about Nine. I did, but it confused the fuck out of me because like, did they even mention, hold on. Like, I didn't even see anything about nine here. Like it talks about everything else. I did read this and like I said, it, none of it, like I didn't process it because it seemed like it was like, it was the wrong description. But then again, I haven't played Honkai Impact. I know a lot of people were saying that this sounds very similar to like Honkai Impact and you know, it could be related to, like, lore there involving, um, um, what's-her-face in Hanka Impact. The music, right? Oh, the Black Sun's referring to nine. Oh, Raiden May, yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, going back here... Some lose their memories, blah, 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 watching in dreams. Blah, 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 blah. However, some self-annihilators would conceive the idea of fighting back. They join the doctors of chaos, vowing to do their best to cure others of nihility and what little time they have left in exchange for their own redemption. Moreover, some of them rely on their strong convictions to try to break the curse of nihility at its root by slaying the ant. Stop. What? I feel, yeah, I feel like, I feel like Akron is fighting back. She could be, um, 
a doctor of chaos. I love I love the name of that. Oh wait, you think Black Swan is the one? You think Black Swan is the one that's fighting back? Well, yeah, that's what I, that's what I said. That's why I said Acheron. Yeah, I said Acheron. No, that's that's literally what I said though, because like my notes are about Acheron. So like Acheron, that would make sense if she's trying to fight back. <clears throat> um, okay, so Doctor Primitive number sixty four of the Genius Society once asked about his disappearance. Oh, it's pronounced I X and not nine. Um, if I X is truly unresponsive to the universe, how could the path of Nihility exist to this day? Perhaps as the self-annihilators aimlessly traverse the cosmos, they are also casting the shadow of the Aeon around the universe. As for the few who can single-handedly withstand the encroachment of Nihility on their existences, their journey of self-annihilation is drawn out to infinity, and the road they walk is like a shadow of IX cast into the world. It's Ix? Interesting. Okay. Um... And y'all said they dropped this last night? 14 hours ago. Very, very interesting that they dropped this lore, like, along with all the Acheron information. This is so, this is so, this is so something. Oh my god. Okay. That was really, that was really, that was really good. Um, looking at my notes and stuff, I'm glad that we that we read this. This is good. Whoever whoever mentioned this, thank you so much for linking it. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of information to be to be to be learned here. So yeah, that gave me a better insight into Akron in general, especially learning about the self annihilators, because I do feel like she is probably a self annihilator. Um, and I feel like she's probably doing this here. She's maybe a doctor of chaos. This sounds so funny, a doctor of chaos. But do we know anything about Dr. Primitive? Or is this the first time that we're learning about Dr. Primitive here? Okay, I'm gonna, um... Oh, heard his mention him. We know we know about him. Crap! I gotta do companion quests. He's like a super villain. He's mentioned the station interlude too. Oh, it must have been brief. Because I don't remember, I don't feel like that means shit anymore because, like I said, memory is so bad. But, yeah. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm going to take a break from the Shienzo interlude. I know I need to finish it, but I've been working on it for so long and I think that I really want to start some companion quests. Um, we will come back to the Shienzo interlude, but I need to, I, it's like, it's... There's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with it. I am really enjoying it. I think it's great. All the characters are wonderful. It's really funny. But it is it's so long. <laughs> and I I'm dying to do some companion quests. So dying. I have been I've been I've been dying. 
All right, let me turn the stuff up. Uh, and we've only done three total companion quests since I started playing this game. So we've done Yukongs, we've done Don Hungs and Bailu's, and we've done Black Swan and Sparkle. Those are the only ones that I've done. Am I planning on being silly on Agron's banner? I, um, for anyone that has me on their friends list, I did change my little thing. What if I did something silly? So, um, from the now until the foreseeable future, we will be we will be silly. We will be absolutely just silly, the silliest that we've ever been. Super silly. You just finished Black Swans. Oh my God, what did you think? I just like women. Raya, I love your I love your little status thing. It's perfect. It's it's so real. Um, I just messaged Aiden. I was like, oh my god, the ending. Um, Aiden, I think I actually have... I think I... Um, what is it? I lost my train of thought. I have it pinned in the mod chat. Let me see, let me see. Wait. Is it not pinned? I thought I pinned it. Thank you, Aiden. I'm gonna pin it. Cause I, I could have, I thought I pinned it before. All right. So we are following, actually Aiden, is it okay if I link it in chat? Just so people know what we're doing or maybe we should make a command. I'm trying to think of how we should do it. So people. <laughs> oh, Dr. Permanent has mentioned the um, Simulator Universe too. Okay, you finished the Fontaine quest last week and immediately did Farina's quest, and she's my favorite Fontaine. Isn't she great? She's she's a joy. I just took so much. It was so much for the one, but me too. I'm excited to get the poster board. Um, okay, thank you, Aiden. That's really I really appreciate that. So really quick, y'all, we are going to. Oh shoot. Yeah, Zenith, thank you for reminding me. I do want to rewatch the trailer. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm like jumping everywhere. Um, I do really want to watch the 2.1 trailer because I didn't get to rewatch it. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm sure that I missed. Um, people were discussing stuff in Discord and I was reading it and I'm like, oh my God, I missed that completely. So uh, I need to rewatch it really quick. Um, let me see. Whoa, 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 okay. All right, we're turning down the volume again, sorry. <laughs> Okay, we're watching the 2.1 trailer. Uh, like I said, I watched it the morning of. I was tired. I was like completely like out of it because of um, of like the meds I was on. So, so much stuff that I missed. So let's rewatch this. See if I can um, perceive the things that I might have missed. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. 
Even the shiniest city has its dark side. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Here's to you, sober one, with this glass of a dream within a dream. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clear. Those hazy memories, she's, a, she's totally a self-annihilator. Oh my god! Rock Studios theme park. I really love popular her. entertainment center in Pentecost. The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. All this free time, why not make the most of it with a game? <laughs> I stakes, I reward. I'm so interested in what's going to happen oh, with adventuring too, because I feel like there was nothing. so much that the dev said about him that like just Even had Robin's me. Robin's death as a bargaining chip. Thinking I'll thoughts. ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. Oh, there's the gemstone that y'all were talking about. Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Wait. Ready? Go back. This is, this is, I missed all of this. Okay, so here's mom and dad being protective. Um, what, what is this? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to go, cause like things were moving in very quick succession here. Um, there's the gemstone. I missed that completely. Is I, you know what's really funny? It's so, it's so funny to me because I love that there's like this motif of like this little heart and it reminds me so much. It looks like my tattoo. It looks like, it looks like it's something from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I, I love this. Um, really quick. I want to see. I was, I was hoping, I was like, does this look like an adventuring stone? Because like an adventuring stone is like a very like, like a light, soft green. But like, I can't really tell by this if this is, the, if it's the same color as like an adventuring stone. <laughs> um, Right, it does look like Kingdom Hearts heart, right? No, not, not another Nort. I think it's actually spade like the trading cards, but don't quote me on that. It would make sense if it was like that would make more sense if it was a spade. Uh, I'm looking right now. It it would it would be like it would it would definitely be like maybe like an upside down spade, but it, it's yeah, it doesn't have the little a spade has the little tail thing going on. It looks like it looks like a Kingdom Hearts heart. <laughs> Like, if y'all don't believe me, like, look it up. Like, it looks, I mean, I guess I could show it here, but it looks like a little Kingdom Hearts heart. Um, yeah, and then it's broken here, too, which is really interesting. Like, what does it mean that it's broken? Like, does that mean that he, like, hold on. So, he's he's holding it and it's already broken. So it's almost like, like, was he given a broken stone or did it? Like, I'm so curious as to what's going on with that broken stone. Um, who is this? Can anyone tell who this is? This is MC? It is? Oh, it's it's so okay. It's so hard to tell. Okay, there's March. This is this is the adventuring boss fight it looks like. But it's there like Oh, here's a spade right here. I think I think this is going to be so cool, like his transformation and like his his boss fight introduction is going to be so cool. It looks so like 
it looks so extra. I'm so excited to see it. I think it's going to be really, really, really cool to see. Um, let me finish. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll ruin this beautiful dream. And create the queen. And we already, so we already knew too that he was probably going to use Robin's death for, for, for something because that was what we were shown at the end of the quest was he was showing us Robin. Oh, wait, no, this is adventuring right here. This is adventuring right here. And then this is the fire MC right here, right? Yeah. Oh, and then adventuring throws him. Okay, and then there's Acheron. Girl, hello. And then and then Acheron starts walking up and it's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like we cannot we cannot pit the LGBTs against each other. They better not. Ladies and this is what a ton of people were pointing out here, too, that, like, this is, like, somehow related to, like, Honkai Impact, which is so interesting. <laughs> How can they not if everyone is LGBT? You're right. You're so right. Um, domain expansion. His coat ending in a uh, peacock tail pattern. What does he even mean by grandest death? Do not love the implications. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real here. Um, ever since doing the Pentacony, like doing the Pentacony quest, the 2.0 quest, I like there's there are like death flags with adventuring. And like that that sucks because I feel like there's they're painting a picture of him having a very tragic i don't know very very tragic lore okay so then there was sunday it looks like there's some kind of trade going on here that was right yeah this too this was pointed out to me in discord that i missed this completely because this looks like adventuring here and this maybe this is adventuring like as as if he were like a child and he looks he looks like he's been through it so I feel like there's definitely some like implications that like it's not gonna be good yeah someone pointed this out too in discord that like there's a firefly is here and she's like broken but does she, is she alive? <laughs> uh, um, might actually die too. Like Robin and Firefly look like they could come back, but something about the death flags for adventuring feel more permanent. How did I know? I know, right, Mystic? There's so much that I missed. Like, it bothers me is why we teamed up with Acheron when we were warned about her by Black Swan. Like, she's probably an emanator. Yeah. I mean, I I think from what we learned, too, like, I think that it, she is an emanator. Like, I think that's already been confirmed that she's an emanator. But um, I think that she is uh, a self-annihilator, which means that she is trying to like break away or not self and sorry she's a self annihilator but she is um she could be a doctor of chaos uh which is basically people who follow that who fall who are uh the, the follower the emanators of the nine the, the hility <laughs> but the self annihilators are people who are trying to like who are aware of, of that, basically, and she's trying to fight back, assen like, essentially. I feel like I explained that so weird, but it's all fresh information. Faeus, thank you so much for 38 months! Did you look at the star floor designs in the dance video? Totally thought I saw Raiden under the bones of a giant snake from Inazuma. Wait, what? Really? I still love the lovers, like, Acheron stands do not come for adventuring stands. This is gay supporting gays, okay? 
Um, sorry, I was catching up. Zio, what are you doing, girl? There's hints in the side quests. She's not, so she's fine. I think, I will actually think Akron is, is fine. I obviously think Akron has a really not good past, but I think that what she's, I think that she does have good intentions, um, at least based off of what we learned today. So, hi, Davey, how are you? Uh, is Sparkle Story Quest telling us that Robin and or Firefly's death were just faked? I don't know. I mean, based off of this, I feel like Firefly is maybe Ready still alive. Um, oh, this is, here's Acheron in this form. Failure. <gasps> She's crying! Okay, I feel like Acheron's gonna die too. I mean, it basically says that she's, that she's on a timeline anyway. Like, she's you know, kind of, well, anyone that fought, that's a self-annihilator, like, they're, they're losing their memories, they're losing themselves. I feel like she's gonna die, too. I'm catching up. Everyone's gonna die. I took during Black Swan Sparkles Quest because I think it's it said something very important. Ooh, can you send it to me? I have a lot of theories in regards to death in this game. Yeah, because I feel like... I don't know. I feel like death in Pentacony is so, like... It's, it's so interesting because obviously if you die in a dream, like did they ever say that if you die in a dream that you don't die in like real life or whatever? Um, I don't know. I, I think it's, do you think she's crying because she's remembering her memories that she has forgotten when she unsheathed her blade? I, I think that she's, she could be crying for a lot of different reasons. She could be crying because, um, yeah, she's remembering stuff again, but I don't think that she's actually going to remember um because the way that they made it sound is that they don't ever get any of that back they just end up losing it all and like disappearing so i mean i i guess something could change if they were to fight the because they're also they also want to fight the um what do you call it the aeon of nihility so i mean they could do that and then something could change who knows Uh, oh, there's side quests? I need to do some side quests! Who knows if death is really the end? Yeah. Okay. Cards. Yeah. Oh, that's so... Hold on. Go. No, stop. This is, this is actually, I didn't even notice this, that, like, at the end of this right here, it was, it's just, like, Akron and Adventuring facing off. Like, what is going on? Oh, my God, I'm dying for 2.1. What the fuck? I'm dying. Assuming Robin is alive, then that means uh, Robin's death. Um, uh, hold on. Robin's death was the exchange between Sunday and Adventuring, but now I'm wondering why Sunday would want Robin's death to be fake to us. Something that spoke out to me a lot is the Myriad Celestial trailer with Black Swan holds out holds cards of the most important people in Panacone. The Duke Inferno card burned first. Incidentally, I also think all of them af are after the Watchmaker's legacy. I don't think any of them are safe. Um, do you have a screenshot of the cards, Aiden? Because I'm kind of curious. I don't remember. Hold on. I'm going to look at your screenshot mystic really quick okay mystic sent me a screenshot from black swan sparkle um companion quest i did do that one but i don't remember some details uh black swan says there is no death inside Pentaconi's dreamscape that's the promise of the family and the blessing of the harmony not even a memo keeper can break this barrier oh my god Oh my god, Firefly's alive! No, like, if I, if I cried, if I sobbed on the internet again, if she's alive, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm 
gonna be so embarrassed. No, no, stay dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so looking at, I'm gonna, holy crap. I've got, I've got like a billion tabs open. What the fuck? Hold on. I'm putting this tab here. So, Zio, no, girl, no, don't you chew on cords. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing, girl? Okay, she was trying to chew on cords. So we had to, we had to, um, escort her out. <laughs> Uh, the death isn't physical. So you think that like, it's like her mind, unless she's not human, you can't die in the dream, but they keep the something unto death monster a secret because it breaks the promise can actually kill you. Oh, wait, where does it say that? Where, where did I miss that? So this, so the meme that killed Firefly could have actually killed her then. The flowers on Robin's halo could be angel trumpets, which are apparently toxic and can in induce hallucinations. What? You can die spiritually. Okay. Okay. Oh, they suffered spiritual death. Okay, okay. All right, so this screenshot that Aiden sent, um, some tarot cards that Black Swan's holding. This is Robin, if Ifrit, that's Firefly, Adventurine, Acheron. Who is this? Is that Sparkle? Oh my God. Okay, so Robin is supposedly dead. Ifrit's dead. Firefly's dead. We're getting we're getting death flags for both Acheron and Adventuring, and then Sparkle Sparkle randomly dying would be so funny to me because like, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I, I really I, like I like Sparkle as a character. Um, I think I think she's just she's wild, but like, but that would be so interesting. If it's card burned first. Oh, Sparkle, Sparkle died in her quest. Imagine if Sparkle was dead this entire time. Oh my God. Sparkle, Sparkle, yeah, Mystic, you just did it, right? Sparkle died in her own quest. Sparkle might fake her own death just for the fun of it. I could see that. Sparkle could just come on stage after everyone died and say, okay, now me. <laughs> she kept having herself as a victim in all the murder mysteries. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Oh my God. What? Yeah. No, I agree, Aiden. What if everything is bullshit? <laughs> what if it's all bullshit? What if they're all actually fine? Oh my, my, my brain hurts. No, that would be so, that'd be so funny. I genuinely feel like nobody's going to die. See, see, I talked about death on Friday and I, the thing is like, I'm okay with deaths in media. I don't want there to be just random deaths everywhere for shock value. Like I think the deaths should be meaningful and should, you know, like actually be relevant to the story. And it's not just for like shock value and like, you know, to bring on fake emotions basically. Um, so, but the thing is, is that I, I also want like deaths to be permanent. Like I want, if they're going to kill someone off, keep them dead. Unless there is like a really valid explanation as to why the character didn't actually die. Um, but I feel like when there isn't permanent death and it's used over and over and over again, that kind of cheapens the story. Or not cheapens, I don't know if that's the right word, but it basically makes it feel like there's no, there's no high stakes anymore like okay well maybe if somebody does die it's like well maybe they're not dead because we've don't cheapen death exactly there we go yeah so 
I don't know if I believe that all of these are fake. Like, I think that someone's gonna die for real because like they, they can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Because we already have the situation with Ting Yoon and like that's, we don't know what the fuck is going on there. And I know some of y'all have been sitting with that for for a year now after after Ting Yoon did her thing and nobody knows if she's dead or alive. Um, so, <laughs> if it comes back, my death was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> Someone needs to die for real because they are going to lull us into this false sense where no one dies, but then someone actually does, right? Um, we forgot about Misha Mikhail. See, I don't know. Like, I, I really do not know anything about Misha. I need to because I feel like there have been people that keep talking about him, and I'm like, I thought he was just a baby. <laughs> I don't know anything about him. Um... I assume his family is alive. Like, uh, any huge plot twist that makes a lot of sense? I think it could be genius, but it depends. Right. It really depends. But, like, I do think that cheapening death just, it makes it really difficult then to actually, like, because if anyone was here when I experienced what happened with Firefly, um, I had a moment of everyone is messing with me, like, you know, because the, the moment moved on so quickly um, that I, I literally didn't believe that it actually happened. Like, I didn't actually think that she died. I thought that, like, it was the, you know, she'd be back. Um, so it took me, like, a bit to actually have emotions about her being gone because I didn't believe it because, like, it just didn't seem like it's something that could happen. Um, like, she had the death flags, but I didn't realize that, like, she was actually gone until we picked up that photo from the floor. So, like, that's the only thing that I worry about is that, like, I just don't want death to be cheapened, basically. Like, if you're going to kill someone, then, like, kill them. Um, I don't want anyone to die. Don't get me wrong. Like, I don't want people to just die. But, like, if it makes sense for the story, if that's the story that you're trying to portray, then, like, people can't keep coming back from the dead, basically. This is what annoys the fuck out of me about Star Wars sometimes. Um, yeah, I want them to have a point. What if Panacone is is all an illusion created by Aha and and Zype was never actually present to begin with? That oh my god. Uh, sorry, I was just catching up on chat here. Um. The actual death is going to be clocky. Misha's grandfather is a watchmaker. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Misha's dead Victorian child trapped in Hollywood. No. Um, so this grandest death that Adventurine says in the trailer, then what could it mean? I think... As, as a depressed person... I got clinical depression. It sounds like he's very depressed and he's just like, he's maybe making the biggest gamble of his life, which is probably going to be his life, which is devastating given that there, there's all this context that he probably has a really sad past. Pinocchio. Oh, you think it could be the death of Panacone? Yes, I, well, Faeus, I read the little thing that they dropped on Hoyo Lab earlier, um, and it was so interesting. I'm still trying to, there's still, like, more I need to learn about the Aeons in general, but I understand now the difference between, like, an Aeon and an Emanator, um, and some of the Emanators that we know of in the story, like, um, the family, uh, well, sorry, the IPC, we know that the Emanators, the Emanators that we do know are Diamond and, um, Terabon, Keen, or whatever. Uh, and we know about F Fantilia, um, Acheron. So, yeah, I did learn the difference between those ones. You just said Equilibrium 4. Congratulations. Can we talk about how suspicious, suspicious Sunday is? He's so suspicious. 
I also think he's referring to himself. He expressed many times that he doesn't care if he dies. Yeah. Sad. Panic Funny is interesting because it was kind of hinting in the MSQ that something is majorly wrong with the dreamscape. Yes. He could see it as a gambling perspective, mine or yours. Either way, it will be grand. Reading to the dead Aeon um, Enna, the order might be interesting because they were absorbed by Zype, but Sunday's design resembles Enna a lot more than Zype, despite being a leader of the Harmony. Huh. Um, I'm interested if maybe we'll get a new weapon in this fight. Like, our weapon might... Oh, I think I think we're going to get our... Um... I feel like this is going to be like a really epic moment in the story. I think it's going to be similar to uh, what we experienced with Cocolia. Um, so I think that we're going to get our next, like the, the trailblazer is going to get their next like path thingy. What about the Stellaron? Actually, yeah. <laughs> I don't, we completely forgot about the Stellaron. I have no idea. Okay. Oh, hold on. I've. This is uh, them showing the characters now, right? Yeah. Um, really quick, I just want to watch it one more time. <laughs> You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Here's to you, sober one, with this glass of a dream within a dream. It's only when the sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clear. This is where it ends. Clock Studios Theme Park, the most popular entertainment center in Pentecost. The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. All this free time, why not make the most of it with a game? High stakes, high rewards. All or nothing. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll ruin this beautiful dream Wait. and create the grandest. Yeah, dream. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so when he says. Um, I'll ruin this beautiful dream. So I really do think that he's referring to, yeah, he could be referring to the dreamscape and he could be referring to himself. Like, it's just like a double thing, you know? Like, that would make a lot of sense that he's just, ref he's referring to both. Okay, there is the stuff. Hello? Oh! Oh my god, I'm like, I'm so fucking ready for 2.1. How long do we have until 2.1? Two weeks? Ladies and gentlemen. Sunday is so pretty. It's seven days? No way. It's that soon? Where did time go? Oh my god. Okay, so I have to say, day... Two, as soon as, is 2.1, the very next day. When is this, what day is this dropping? A Tuesday? It's Monday? Tuesday night, it comes out. So Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. We are, we are, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm, 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 I'm so. <sighs> You're saying it Tuesday night to do it. I don't care. No, that's so fair. That's so fair. If if y'all are pulling all nighters, you're so valid. But please take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Okay. Um. Oh, are these are these his adventuring's like little baby hands? And then he, I just noticed he has a little bandage. Oh, what happened to him? Ready? Because, ah, what the heck is happening? Go back. And okay. Ready? What the fuck? To unveil your cards? Yeah.
Hello? All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm glad we rewatched because there was so much there that I missed and I I can't I can't. No, YouTube is going through it. I don't know what the hell was happening. Um the kid is handing him the hat as if to tell him to embrace this persona because it's safer. What if I threw up? You can use the Wait, you can, Prin? No way. I didn't know that. <laughs> I've been around since YouTube was, oh, I sound like a boomer. Um, YouTube was born. I didn't know you could do that. That's so interesting. Now, but now YouTube is like, is taking a shit, but it's fine. We rewatched and I am enlightened now. There's so much going on. Um, and I am... Uh, I'm extremely excited. <laughs> I'm extremely excited. I feel like rewatching that just made me more excited too. Back in my day. Um, had light in his eyes, but his current eyes are dead. What if I cry? Wait, did did it? Did was that what happened? Because I must have missed that. Staying up all night to see my gaze is taking care of myself. I'll have to wake up earlier so that I don't know how to go about it, Aiden. Aiden, do you want to like just, do, you should just take the day off. Tuesday night and then Wednesday story, baby. I'm so excited. Oh my God, I can't wait. Captain, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate that. Enjoy your emotes. Thank you. He had light in his eyes. Find it just very suspicious that Sam was not shown in the trailer even once because didn't we annihilate him? Wait, no, we we didn't annihilate him. We didn't. Like we beat him, but I think that he was. Didn't he go somewhere? I don't remember. Excuse me. Oh yeah, like I I feel like there's a lot of things like even, um, Adventuring's boss form. I've mentioned that it reminds me so much of our son. Uh, which is Joker's persona. And um, Arsene was based off of Lupin, who was kind of like a morally gray, like vigil vigilante. So I feel like if if they perhaps got the same um, inspiration, then like it seems like it would make sense for, for adventuring. Um, I don't even know. Did they already show off Acheron's stuff, y'all, or no? Honkai Star Rail devs are very big fans of Persona. Yeah, that's another thing, too, is that I know some people said there's a lot of, like, uh, little things. To pre-farm? What, what does she need? Oh, be the same as um, Black Swan. What is that? The, wait, hold on. Destruction. Harmony. Nihility, nihility, right? Thank you, thank you so much for linking that. Jesus. Wait, is this? Oh wait, she these? No. Do I not have it unlocked? Wait, no, I do have it unlocked because I worked black. Am I? The bottom one. These ones, right? Or blue. F okay. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, Aiden, I'm gonna, I'll start um, the auto battle and then I'll go take a break.
Oh, oh, we let, oh, oh, Acheron was, okay. It's my turn with uh, Fushuan. <laughs> Thank you, Pickle. I'm sorry for anyone else on my friends list. I know I should be like, I like I thought about just going down and like using everybody's um, support to give everybody some money, but I I keep going back to Pickles Fushua. No one's gonna pay you to stand still. All right, um, I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna let the auto battle play, and then uh, yeah, yeah, we'll be back in like less than five. Be right back. Stand still. <laughs> Time to say bye. Boom. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. <laughs> Stand still. Ill tidings manifest. <laughs> <laughs> Converge and awaken. Human creations. Say bye. Boom. Stand still. <laughs> Time to say bye. Say bye. Boom. Oh. Happy New Year! <laughs> Relax. Mind your mouth. Stand still.
Okay, we're back everyone. Welcome back. Hope everyone had a nice break. Time to say bye. <gasps> thank you. Thank you so much, Aiden, for making that. Thank you. Sparkle texted you. What did she say? Akron short is number four on YouTube trending. Let's go. The gays are let's go lesbians. Time to say bye. I I adore I adore pickles fish one. I can't wait until one day it's my turn to also have my own fushuan. Whenever that day may be. I will probably be the most annoying person on the internet. Maybe. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Time to say bye. Yes, I am pulling for Akron. Creations. Relax. <laughs> Stand still. I changed this, y'all. I changed it because <laughs> it's not true for Genshin anymore. I don't know who to pull. Whoever your heart is yearning for the most. Time to say bye. And when she's aware, there are no exact order for most quests. She doesn't. Yes, for anyone that is wondering, we are starting companion quests today. I'm really excited. Um, and Aiden has compiled a document for me to follow and we are well aware that there is like no correct way or anything but yeah what I would really like to do is I would like to do one video for um uh Bellabog one video for for her to space station Shienzo of my big reactions to all of the companion quests Time instead of doing individual by. ones for like individual videos for each companion quest so that's kind of what my plan is. So are we gonna go back to community pool nights? I don't know if I'll do them. I think it'd be, I think that what might work better since I don't wanna feel committed to streaming, um, maybe we could do, actually, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't decided. I haven't decided yet. I'll I'll think about it. How about you and me pull and Kate? Um yeah, I would love to see see uh Kate's pulls. I don't I don't know what I'm going to do either. Like I'm I'm really thinking cuz I'm I'm going to pull for everybody. Um but I haven't decided cuz I want to get a light cone for one of the four characters in 2.1. So, um adventuring Acheron Jinglu and Locha. Um, I haven't decided whose light cone, because I don't want to get a light cone for all of them, but yeah. You're going to be feral. Do you plan on doing them in the exact order, starting with the Shianzo ones before uh, Jinglu? I will, excuse me, I'm going to start, I'm going to start in order, I think. <laughs> Day erasure. <laughs> Okay, so we did our, I keep like, there we go. Let's, I need to get rid of these, these thingies. They're bothering me. Go away. You're going all in for Akron. I kind of figured that you were, Scott. I kind of figured. Um, ghost hunting squad, wait, I can't read that one. What's this one? My dear, are you there? I'm your old friend. I hear you're in Pentacony too. Fancy meeting up? It's me. I know you're busy, but I need your help with something. What is going on? Have you heard about the Charmony Festival? There's going to be a performance by Robin. Oh, I have a ticket.
How did you know I had extra tickets? I should have expected this from me, but these tickets are almost impossible to get a hold of. I never imagined that you'd have managed to grab one. Looks like the market isn't looking great at the moment. I just can't sell these tickets. Fortunately, that wasn't the business I was calling about. Robin had two backup performing performers that had to drop out due to sickness. I received a quota. Um, I can teach you steps. I'm not interested. Have a good lurk, Mystic. Tell the kids I said hi. Hey, don't just leave me hanging. It's really simple. Click this link and enter your personal. I'm, am I getting... Why is everyone always trying to scam me? Oh yeah, remember to upload a front... A front on photo of yourself. It has to be front facing. Even better if you do a 360... I'm gonna say I'll trust. <laughs> I've signed up. Here's the picture. Oh my god, I don't know which one to pick. Oh my god, oh my god, they're all so great. Um... I'm I'm going to I'm going to choose sparkle. Wait. Is it sparkle? I ain't your friend. What is happening? Please don't come back. Oh my god, when she texts you, it is a it's it's a hoot. This this is this is literally the fifth time this man has texted me. The esteemed university of, or actually maybe it's not the fifth time. Okay, maybe, I mean, I'm being dramatic. It's the third time he's texted me, but why? The esteemed university of Veritas Prime has once again commenced its enrollment proceedings. Do you perchance harbor aspirations for further refinements? Ugh. Interstellar voyage is necessary. I don't like any of that. Well, maybe philosophy is fine. Are you privy to the... To tackle scientific quandaries? Yes, to unravel philosophy. What are you talking about? Where in philosophy lies a notable lack of definitive criterion for right and wrong. Okay, I would not recommend the, this discipline to Neo. Did he... Did he... So did he just say, you must be smart... I don't recommend this to stupid people. <laughs> you may need more time for careful consideration. Beware of those who only extol the virtues of an academic discipline without candidly acknowledging its challenges. I've met numerous students brimming with enthusiasm only to witness their eventual departure ensconced in disillusionment and dis despondency. <laughs> Hence my academic... <laughs> Though it may sound harsh, not everyone is suited for... <laughs> this may sound really mean, but not everyone can go to school because they're stupid. Um, I'm surprised you're aware it sounds harsh. Do ponder... Wait. Do ponder upon it with due diligence before tendering your response. And should you require it, I shall gladly lend you. <laughs> oh, this man... Is this Sparkle again? Hi, Lori. It's me. Even though I'm not with you, I know you've done quite a number of missions recently. I want to hear your thoughts. How do you feel if you're feeling satisfied? I want more. So that's how you are now. That's good to hear. If I need help, I'll look for you. After all, I'm still the same old me. I know. <laughs> Yeah, you know that already. No changes at all. Arg, I accidentally stained my coat, Tisk. Mission's over, though, so I have time to clean it. Until next time. Wait! No! This is- this is Kafka! I'm 
I'm trying to get her to... No! I was really hoping she would send me another boob pic. Damn, I, I fumbled. How was I supposed to respond? <laughs> I messed up, big time. I fumbled so, could you get it? Does it, has anyone received that one? Could you get another boob pic? I'm so mad right now. All right, let me go to the... Okay, so we need to go to... Number one on this list is Silver Wolf. So we're gonna start with Silver Wolves. I have to go to Herta's space station. Wait. Oh my God, I'm getting confused. Um. Wait, why am I teleporting? Isn't it already in my log, probably? What am I going through right now? This one is called Punk Lord Mentality. Wait, maybe I do need to go. Okay, maybe I do need to go. Uh, we'll just teleport, like, here. Oh, is that a stain? I like this coat. You won't rewatch my thoughts about Firefly? Oh, no. Did you see your message above? I think I missed it, Scott. Let me see. What, what did you say? Have you got the achievement for sending a message to someone that goes to the character limit? No, I haven't. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Acheron's light cone is busted? Increases the wearer's crit damage by 36% and inflicts empty bubbles on enemies when the character hits them. The effect lasts for a single turn and can be triggered once against each target. The wearer deals 20%. Jeez. Oh, I mean, it just feels... It honestly seems like Acheron is busted in general. <laughs> Um, just send someone a bunch of gibberish? You can do that? Like, oh, somebody on your friends list. It has to be like a real person on your friends list? <laughs> Hold on. Like that? I didn't get an achievement. You need the Numbi skin? It should be long. It told me text entered is too long. She's telling Dolce, so Dolce, Dolce's not like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, just type a bunch of shit? It's not working! <laughs> Elves are looking 
looking good these days. Is this the Numby skin though? Do I ha I have to have the skin? I have to do the Pokemon event. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, okay. Um, it's not your quest log. It's because you need to check on Arlen's text. Maybe it's in the message history. Okay. <laughs> Arlen's text. Oh, oh boy. Hold on. Am I supposed to go? Did I leave him on red? When will you replace this? Got no, that's not it. There it is. Okay, cool. Thank you, Aiden. I looked over and thought that was a text exchange for an actual quest. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you need to have, apparently you need to have the skin for that. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start doing companion quests. Um, I've only done three so far. I'm going to start in like order. So we're going to start on her to space station and we're going to kind of work our way through. Um, and the first one that we're gonna do is uh, Silver Wolves. Um, if anyone is curious about like the like the way that I'm following the quest, um, wait, what is the command? Exclamation point. I didn't see what the command was. <laughs> we do have a command. I could put it in the title too. Oh, hey, uh, okay, cool. Thank you, Aiden. Let me put it in the title. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we are following um, this document that Aiden put together. I'm really excited. It looks like it's, I'm just, oh, I'm so excited. I'm fine. Oh my God, I can't. Okay, we're gonna get started. I'm just gonna shut up. Here we go. Correct. All the cabins they might pass by have been checked. Also, remember to report to lead researcher Asta. Volume okay? Oh wait, I don't think I can trust in here. Um, I'm here. We'll deal with problems outside the base zone later. Huh? It's you. You look busy. Are you surprised? Didn't you ask me to come? Sorry, this is embarrassing. We suddenly had some stuff come up. I wanted to take care of it before you arrived, but I can't seem to even get a break around here. Never mind about that. Here, this is for you. I made it this morning, and I've been keeping it warm. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so, this is so ridiculous of me, but I have not, I need to get lunch. Oh my god. I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna, I have leftovers. I'm gonna go heat up my lunch. And we're gonna eat it while we do this because I'm like, girl, it's 4 p.m. What am I doing with my life? I'll be right back. I need to heat up my lunch. Be right back.
Okay, we're back, y'all. Um, I just got my I heated up my lunch really quick, and we're just gonna we're just eating it here. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh yeah. So I got Effigy made this Cajun pasta. It's like so good. So that's what we're eating today. All right. Um. Uh, fried rice or yeah fried rice it's just a little something i whipped up thank you i spent a long time wondering what to give you in the end i realized i should stick to what i'm good at i hope i don't make a loves mess. my fried rice so i hope you like it too sorry it's so noisy here i wanted to find somewhere quieter where i could get your feedback but mm-hmm Effigy is my my roommate, just like Black Swan is to Acheron. Hmm. I'm pretty confident in this dish. Unfortunately, I was a bit rushed at the end. Some big shot suddenly decided to visit the space station today. Everyone has been in a hurry since the announcement. They're all worried that a bad impression could damage Madame Herta's reputation. Miss Asta said that the guest appears to be Madame Herda's research partner. If he's doing research with her, he must be famous throughout the galaxy. Ah, uh, look at the time. The guest is almost here. If you're curious, just follow the crowd. Miss Asta and I will be there soon. Okay. Welcome to A big shot. I'm excited. Oh. Yeah. Wow, it's the first time I've seen such a spectacle. Even the top brass. So this visitor is. <clears throat> Get ready. Hypothesis. Thought always precedes mm. words. Is this Skrillum? <laughs> And yet, I can't find the words for this moment. It's good to see you, Asta. I apologize. I'm wow! I'm 13 seconds Is this... earlier than the appointed time. I hope it's not a bother. Was this technically like his of course introduction? Not, oh, okay. Welcome to Herta Space Station. No need for formalities, Asta. Herta Space Station is where knowledge converges. Here we celebrate the equality of thought. Such collaboration between organic life forms is magnificent and efficient. You're rebuilding the space station far quicker than I could have imagined. We appreciate your high praise, Mr. Skrullum. Would you like me to show you around? Since the last summit, we've launched several new research projects focused on silicone-based matrices. Well, that sounds lovely, but I do have a meeting with Herta, so let's put the new surprises on hold for now. Madam Herta should be in her office. I'll take you there. Right this way. Sure. And you are? This is so funny considering I've already talked to Skrillum. Like, <laughs> the timeline is, is really funny of doing these. I'm Lori. Ah, hello, young madam. I've heard so much about you. Herta talks about you often. She's quite curious about you, as am I. What is it like to live in symbiosis with a Stellaron? I hope we'll have sufficient time in the future to get to know each other and answer this question. Sorry, I wanted to show you around, but now I don't think I'll be able to get away. <clears throat> Deepaw, thank you so much for 32 months. How are you? How was the appointment? There's a whole history about robot life in this game. Is it in the archives, probably? Uh-uh-uh. Nope, sir. Don't you do it. Um, go ahead or you won't be able to catch up. That's all right. All right. See you later. Hmm? A strange. 
strange. It should be around here somewhere. Maybe it's hidden inside Madame Herta's portrait. Huh? Uh, do you need something? If you're looking for the front desk, just go straight through those doors. Uh, what are you doing? Are you having... <coughs> Excuse me. Are you having... <coughs> it's a little spicy, so... Hang on. Okay. Um, what are you doing? Are you having trouble with something? She looks so pretty! Oh, another fan of Madame Herta's? Well, I'm afraid this portrait's being taken down soon. Wait a second. I know you. I saw you chatting with Captain Arlen just now. You must be the rising star who caught Madame Herta's attention. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Leonard, a cybersecurity engineer here at the space station. You probably know that this place was recently attacked by the Antimatter Legion. Mm -hmm. In the chaos, the master control system for each zone was paralyzed. Now that the station is being rebuilt, my job is to repair equipment and restore the space station's cybersecurity. But during the repair process, I discovered some anomalies. The access records show that a third party other than the Legion invaded while the master control system was paralyzed. Was it a lady in sunglasses? I don't know who or what it was. Actually, I'm investigating that right now. We suspect that it may have been the Stellaron Hunters. Mm -hmm. It's an elusive group and very dangerous. Every member is on the IPC's wanted list. They include a super hacker from Punk Lord. I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost to her once before. <laughs> a while ago, I discovered her whereabouts during a screening process. I was planning to follow the clues to find more details about her, but I fell into her trap. Can you guess what happened next? She reverse hacked my device, sent out a bunch of spam, made a video game open to the space station, and told everyone <laughs> that an idiot named Leonard made a big silly mistake. Ugh, I don't want to think about it. Now that everything is calmed down, I thought they'd be on my case already. The silver lining? Madame Herta was generous enough to allow me to continue investigating this matter. Silverwolf is really funny. Hi, John John. How are you? Oh. There was a free light cone that... Wait, I think someone... I feel like someone talked about the, the Silverwolf light cone. It's a little spicy, me thinking about the Ak the Akaswad short. <laughs> um, normally, she doesn't want to deal with it. She's getting revenge on you. I wouldn't go that far. I'm just a nobody. You think Madame Herta would remember me? To put it simply, the leaders have given me an opportunity. How could I not cherish it? If I can make up for my mistakes and do a good job, I may have a chance to prove myself. This time, I plan to start from inside the space station and see if I can find some clues to trace the intruder's steps. Maybe I can find the blind spot I missed before. I designed a decoding program. Look, it looks like a camera, but it's actually a detector. We should be able to find hidden clues with it. Just like this. Learn aims detector at the wall. Something seems to appear on the wall. Oh, uh, uh, uh that's, uh. A drop of sweat, a drop of water, a blue teardrop shaped object. She's just so pretty. I didn't ask you to look at that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Why would something like this be in the space station? The staff wouldn't even dare scribble on the wall, let alone leave a drop of sweat. So this is what we're looking for? This suspicious evidence? <sighs> it wasn't what I was expecting, but Mm-hmm. Wait a second. Uh, let me take a look. Oh, oh, I see. This is digital graffiti that appears to represent punk Lorian symbols. If I'm not mistaken, this should be some kind of automatic encryption. 
We need to decipher it if we want to find any culpatory evidence. So the name of Silverwolf's planet is Punk Lord? <laughs> um, what does this have to do with me? Oh, you got me there. I got caught up in our conversation. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, let me think. Uh, maybe I've been under too much stress recently and I subconsciously want a friend. Anyway, if I were to find clues related to the Stellaron Hunters, wouldn't that be helpful to you too? Wait, that's actually so sad. Ah, just do me a favor. It won't take up too much of your time. Here, just point it at the graffiti on the wall. It's where she's from. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Investigate the suspicious graffiti. You point at the graffiti of the wall, then some blinking blue patterns started to appear. Suddenly the pattern imploded and engulfed its surrounding sounds and colors. Something inside seems to be breaking out from it. Oh, okay, we're fighting. <laughs> Why are there void rangers here? <laughs> Stand still. She's part of the Braun universe? I don't even know what that means. Time to say bye. Boom. Oh, that, that scared me to death. Did you see that? It seemed like something popped up here, then Void Rangers jumped out. Don't worry, it's taken care of. That's scared me to death. But look, just like I guessed, this graffiti is encrypted. If we decipher it, we can see some hidden information. The surveillance camera captured her face. Silver Wolf. It's exactly the same as the photo on the IPC's wanted list. Let me see what she was up to. Is this a transmitter beacon? Oh, I see. She probably ran into the Antimatter Legion during the invasion, then used this beacon to teleport the enemies somewhere else. We accidentally activated the beacon again just now, and they were brought back. Jeez, Stellaron hunters have the ability to stow enemies away like that? Mm. Beacon transmission that doesn't require a power source and can be implemented solely through computation? No wonder they were able to break into the space station. With this, I'm afraid not even Madame Herta's office is safe. Is this kind of is this kind of tech really that impressive? Say it. It's not only impressive. How should I put it? She can edit reality as freely as she could edit a program. Hmm. Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? I always thought it was fringe science and that nobody other than the masked fools believed it really existed. There's a strange signal nearby. Maybe it's another piece of graffiti. Okay, I ate my food so fast, I was so hungry. <clears throat> it wasn't until they started talking about the fried rice where I was like, wait a minute, I'm starving. <laughs> um... Interesting. Manipulate reality like like data. That's why Silver Wolf's abilities work the way they do. So, um, but yeah, P Punk Lordian is like, is that like a planet or, or is that something I'm gonna find out? I know, right? I was so. I was so hyper fixated, Aiden. I completely mark. forgot that I was hungry. <laughs> Must be making fun of us. What? She's so tiny. She, she is a. Zone. She is but a small, small baby. Yep. Ah, disappeared again. This thing keeps cutting out when I'm deciphering it. She must have stopped here for a bit. Let's look around. You may not believe this, but... 
Uh... Oh, right here. Okay. <clears throat> Can you let me have some fun this time? Our last few operations turned out to be pretty dull. She makes it seem easy. Is she really looking at the Curio Collection Index? Who is she talking to? Judging by how calm she is, she must have been in this room for a while. Maybe she was waiting for someone. I'm not sure what happened after that. Let's search somewhere else. Oh, there it is. Okay. Your fake ID info is ready. Ah, so that's what happened. She sneaked in first, then helped her partner in through the main door. It's a classic hacking operation. Let's see. The registered name is... Leonard Colliwell. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, you're the imposter among us! How is this possible? She... She used my identity. I, I never noticed that there was an issue with this record. I subconsciously glanced right past it when I saw my own name. She's so cunning. I think that I'm just a big fan. She's a sneaky one. Maybe you need to check yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. They did not. I'm saying it. I still it's say that all the time. Mistake. Even though it's, I know it's outdated. The ordinary person is to check for unfamiliar names, right? <laughs> Who would think to check their own name? The graffiti's location is quite interesting. It feels like she's playing a game with us. Yeah, one I know. One dot leads to another. I know people were mentioning this is like, this is from 1.1. What does that mean? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Basically, it just means like, you know, don't, don't start anything. The, uh, uh, or else you're going to get it. <laughs> I don't know. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Uh, <clears throat> it's really fun. I heard from a friend that the hackers on Punk Lord have a tradition. When they hack, they purposely leave something behind for people to discover. Kind of like throwing down the gauntlet. They call this the Punk Lord mentality. There can only be competition when there is rivalry. And there can only be excitement when there is competition. Life's a game, and having fun is what's most important. I don't understand that way of thinking, but it seems like this graffiti might have been left behind for us on purpose as a clue. The same thing happened last time as well. I was so close to the target, but got obliterated in the final battle of information. Oh, so close yet so far. It's not your fault. Let's focus on the work at hand. Say that one. You're right doesn't help to dwell on past failures. Thank you. Ah, she seems to be leaving. Let's keep up. Silverwolf the size of two sauce packets. She's so tiny. She's so cute. They seem to be heading toward the monitoring room. I have a question for everyone. I, I feel like this will be a fun discussion. Um, Does that hurt? Does anyone in here think that the Stellaron Hunters are, like, bad guys? Or, like, I'm, I'm curious to hear what people think. <clears throat> From the early 90s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's old. Ill fate descends. Beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Stand still. Time to say bye. Boom. The human body is beautiful. They employ questionable methods. I don't know. Probably not. No, no. And good intentions, questionable methods. Mm -hmm. They're bad and I fully support the wrongs. No. 
They're absolutely anti-heroes. They're trying to save the galaxy, but not for heroic reason. Same. They kill people, but I love and forgive them. Yeah, I was kind of curious to see what people thought. Like, I feel like... I mean, they have wiped out planets, so in a way, yes. Like, yeah, I think that it's... Another oh, it's Herta! They're all different, too. State your business and stop blocking my view. Sorry. Sorry. Huh? Is this section of the record damaged? She went through the wall and disappeared. Uh, she altered the record? She teleported herself? Could it be a display malfunction? That's highly unlikely. I bought this detector just last week. The refund guarantee hasn't even expired yet. Didn't you say you developed this yourself? Uh, uh, let's talk about that later. Hold on, I got it. It might be an effect from a curio. There was a pre-established folded space here and the intruders found it and took advantage of it. No wonder she kept going through the curio collection index. This space is connected to the Stellaron room. Do you still remember it? That's where they put the Stellaron inside you. Mm-hmm. I can't recall. I think... <laughs> cough, cough. Huh? What are you muttering about? <laughs> hmm. Why would they leave you here if their objective was the Stellaron? With her capabilities, all she would have needed to do was make another beacon. She would have been able to escape with the Stellaron, no problem. Huh? There's no graffiti here. Oh, we're doomed. The trail has gone cold. Ugh, so strange. Did she really leave just like that? She came all this way and didn't take anything with her, nor leave anything behind. Oh, um, they did leave you behind. <clears throat> Sorry. Ray, right. like, hello? It must have been a terrible feeling waking up in a place that was completely unfamiliar to you. Uh, that's all right. It wasn't so bad. Sounds like you've experienced it yourself. Oh, me? That's how I feel when I wake up every day. <laughs> I can't help but feel there's more that they're after. Okay, Leonard is actually <sighs> so funny. I'm really I'm actually a big fan of Leonard. Too. Otherwise, I'll feel bad for having you do so much work for nothing. <sighs> the more I talk about it, the worse I feel. I should probably find something that I can do. Hmm. There's a rating pistol here. I wonder what my rating would be. Whoa, look here. There's a strange access log in the rating pistol's compartment. It looks like the log time occurred during the Legion's invasion. The researchers would have already been evacuated by then. <laughs> Could it have been her? In which case, she didn't leave immediately. She implanted the Stellaron inside you and then fiddled around with the rating pistol for a while. Could it be that... I just realized something. We need to go to the curio collection room on the other side. Hmm. Hey, Captain. I'm glad you liked it. Hi, Chick, how are you? My mommy left me a girlfriend's dead. Screw dust, I went out. Uh... Yeah, Leonard is hilarious. Hey, Shadow. Hope your rest goes well. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I'm still, excuse me, let me catch up here. Um, I just, no! Hold on, staring at Malice, the rating pistol, gazed at Kafka at 90 points and announced, is it basing things on height? Don't think so. Wait a minute. Sixty-one points? What does this mean? Thirteen points. On intellect, don't think so. What? Well, that was mean, though, about the, about intellects. Seven points? Why is that this score? You don't understand. They're all different from characters. 
Um, <clears throat> all the Stellar Hunters are hot, and I have no idea whether they're good or bad. I think the main question is, is Elio bad because the Hunters follow him because he can give them what they want, basically? So what does Elio want to achieve by doing all of this? I answer that mostly as individuals after getting to know them more, but to be honest, I see them more as anti-heroes. I don't know enough about the Stellar Hunters Hunter's lore as a whole. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting to, and that was just based off of the... Um, the Stellaron Hunter uh, animation that we watched. Um, that one kind of gave me like the f the feeling of them actually being more like anti heroes. Like they like they probably have their own reasons for why they do things, and obviously they haven't done good things. But I also think that like they're the things that they're doing are like for maybe um, bigger things going on. So, Elio is Doctor Strange. Let's just hope Kafka doesn't turn out to be Iron Man. No. They're on a similar path as us. Yeah. They kill people, but like, who doesn't? Right. That sounds so bad. But I mean, like, this is a fictional world, like a fictional sci fi world, and everybody is killing people. I think they're anti-heroes too. We don't know Elio's intentions yet, but they all believe in his plan. In the context of the Honkai Star universe, they're clearly bad guys and extremely wanted criminals with huge bounties and terrible reputations. But one of the themes of the game is nothing is black and white, just like Anne's and their ideals are not in themselves good or bad. We learn that lots, we learn that from lots of conflicts, like for example, Eon, or Ian versus uh, Yaoshi. Um, yeah, like we were reading the lore drop that was on Hoyo Lab this morning and I learned about the, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? The, uh, I, I, X, X, I don't, I still don't know how to pronounce it or like if it's pronounced a certain way. Um, and how awful it seems like to follow that, the path of nihility. Like, I don't know who would like make the decision of like, I'm gonna follow the path of nihility when you, like, it just sounds like hell. Um, what's it give you for Kafka? Uh, 90 points. Some characters have special pistols on like Silverworth who is implied to have hacked. Oh. I based on nothing, but I feel confident to tweet about it em em empathetically. <laughs> It doesn't seem uh, especially voluntary. Yeah. Yeah, like it makes me wonder like how that even works in general. Um, I wanna try something really quick. Uh, someone said to use, to try and use March. Don't ask me why she's almost dead. Rating invalid. It's eyeball swivels around three times before suddenly widening after a brief imp impasse, it's eye shuts warily. Is it basing things on a... What does that mean? Who is March 7th? The rating gazed at Don Hung. 88 points? Question mark? Feeling puzzled, it moved its eyeballs around and suddenly shut its eyes. It seemed to be sulking for being fooled. Why is that his score? You don't understand. What does, what is happening? This is actually so funny. Sampo? Rating invalid, it's eyeball. Oh, this is the same thing as Mart. What does that mean? Hold on, I'm gonna try Sparkle. My dear Mena. She's so small. Um, 55 points. Okay, so it didn't do anything there. The way I'm getting distracted by this. Thirty points? What on earth is this gun basing its scores on? <clears throat> What do March and Sampo have in common? I have no idea. Yeah, they're both mass fools, right. That's why I was wondering. Um, 88 signifies infinity? 
It gives regular Don Hung uh, 88 points. Huh. Wait, he does get a rating invalid? Hold on, I have I have Jing Yuan as well. Rating invalid. It would be a devious prank indeed if this gun was just dishing out random scores, except he didn't even get a score. What the fuck does that mean? What does that... Yeah, I guess... Hold on. Fifty-two. What does Misha get? Ooh, hold on. Oh, 25, okay. Okay, I thought it, I thought it said something different at first. I was like, "What?" But no, it it he just got a normal score. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. He can barely see above the stand. He's so tiny. Little babies. It only gives two achievements. Yeah, I got one of them. But what other achievement do you get for this? Use the carrier rating pistol. Yep. Misha has keyhole eyes. His eyes are very cute. Also, thank you, whoever used my characters. I appreciate it. All right, let's continue. I got distracted with that, but that was really cool. <laughs> huh. Just as I thought, she was here. Yeah, but I don't think, well, it's, there isn't any confirmation that she's, that Sparkle's an emanator. We went over it earlier and the only known emanators, um, well, I mean, there's, there's a couple of them, but like the well-known emanators are Herta, Acheron, Fantilia, um, there's also Diamond, who's the Emanator of Preservation, uh, Terravon, Keen. Um, those are the only ones that we know for sure. Oh, Bug, Bug as well. <clears throat> uh, a Shattered Curio with particles floating through his crust is just not working, try hitting it. I'm gonna reach out to tap the curio, not knowing whether it is an illusion. You feel that the light emitted by the strange object is more dazzling than before. Tap it. Tap it again. So doesn't mean tap it again. <laughs> the previously dim curio suddenly shines brightly and you throw your hands up to shield your eyes. Several seconds later, you open your eyes but the cracks have disappeared. After checking that you're not hallucinating, you decide to tell Asta about this. The back end detected a weird quantum fluctua fluctuation fluctuation just now. You were right beside it at the time. What happened? I fixed the curio. I whacked the curio a few times. I can't believe it either. The back end data from Pan Pana Panatico Panopticon system does show it has been fixed and is activated at the moment. It's been giving out a steady energy reading. It may be pure luck, but this is too much of a coincidence. Hey, could it be that your hand was blessed by an Aeon? All right, I'm kidding. No matter how, you are the one who did it. I've sent the reward. Remember to check it out. That's why it might, oh, it might not be emanators, yeah. <gasps> that one's really cute. Oh my god. I just remembered that Madame Herta has a game cartridge named Punk Lord Mentality in her collection. <laughs> game cartridge? You remember it, right? It's actually on the list of missing curios. I wasn't able to put the two together before. If the hacker has a personal objective other than the Stellaron Hunter's mission, 
I got it. I got it now. The Stellaron Hunter's operation was just a cover for her. She was she was actually after the Curio? Feels like you got it backwards. That's right. She was so interested in the Curio Collection Index that she stayed in the space station even after her mission was complete. This was what she was truly after. She knew we would be looking for the Stellaron Hunters and used it as her cover. Very smart. To be expected of someone from Punk Lord. Hold on, though. Something doesn't add up. The Curios are Madame Herta's most prized possessions. All the visit requests are sent to her office from the computer in the main control room. Some researchers tried to gain access to the Curios for research purposes once, but they didn't get proper authorization. She caught them all red-handed. Hmm, I have a bad feeling about this. Could it be the main control room was hacked as well? She values them even more than the researchers? Say this one. Me too. The fact Madame Herta hasn't responded to this can only mean one thing. That the main control room was hacked as well. We need to go and take a look. Hi, UK! You watched my reaction video? Thank you so much for watching it. Am I ending at five? I'm gonna, um, I, I don't have like a hard stop at five. I at least wanna see if I can finish this. Oh, it, so for um, Silver Wolf, she gets 110 score. That's so funny. I've seen theories that the rating is someone's ability to change fate. Really? Oh, that's so interesting. But I feel like out of the characters that I used, um, uh, Gween only got, Gween got what, 13 or something? <laughs> That's funny. Does that hurt? Forget your wallet? Yeah. Happy New Year! Ill tidings manifest. Nominate, congrats! Kafka did get like a 91, yeah. Beautiful it was really high. Agility. Wait, don't move. Oh, I get chills just looking at the space station monitors now. Let me investigate first. <laughs> Just perfect. Not only did she shut off all the access logs, she shut off all the terminal transmissions too. I thought it was the Legion that did this. Do we need to do a restart? No one noticed it this whole time? Let's focus on the main task first. I am curious though. She paused the terminal transmissions, but didn't touch the local data at all. I really don't get her. As a Stellaron hunter, she leaves the Stellaron behind. As a hacker, she doesn't delete the local log. Hmm. There's an external port here. I'm gonna plug in and take a look. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. It might be a trap. Why don't you let me do it? I'm gonna say this one. Relax, friend. I've done this a million times. Look at this agreement. As you feared, a burst of light shines and the enemy appears. Yeah, that does sound really interesting. Stand still. Ill fate is dead. I cannot wait to put Akron and Black Swan on the same team. I'm so excited. Oh my god, I cannot See? wait. I was right. There was something fishy about the local data she left behind. Uh, so were there something strange after all? Now we can browse through the curio access logs. Huh? That can't be right. This curio doesn't seem to have ever left the space station. Um, it just disappeared into thin air? She didn't take the curio either? Hmm, from the way things look, yes. The records show that this curio was last sent to Madame Herta's office, and then it disappeared? I'm seriously confused. What did she come here for? She wouldn't have put the graffiti up just to mess with us, would she? <sighs> no, if I start thinking like that, I may as well give up now. 
I have to fully investigate every lead, or I'll really be out of a job. Okay. We'll teleport. That's not gonna happen. I'll say it again. I don't care what Run May said to you, but there's no chance we're shutting down the simulated universe. Huh? Herta, I've made my decision. Question. What have we invested into this project? Hundreds of system hours, the resources of an entire planet, and the most advanced technology in the entire universe. And what have we gotten in return? Unknowns, confusion, and a series of errors. In the beginning, we defined the simulated universe as a miniature world that could be used to discover the traces of the eons. But now, it's become something far removed from its original purpose. The simulated universe is bound to make errors. You said that yourself, and that's exactly what we're experiencing. Why is that a problem all of a sudden? I adore the vast amount of knowledge, but I cannot accept that the simulated universe remains simply a pending contract waiting to be attended to. Herta, think about it. How many surprises has this project given you? And how many disappointments has it given you? The simulated universe never disappointed me. You are what disappoints me, Skrulem. Oh my god. Do you really the think smart of people are fighting as so exceptionally amazing? <laughs> right now, you're more like 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 someone from the Nitwit Society. Not the Nitwit Society. Oh my god. Herta, I don't mean to question you. Nor do I want to deny the hard work you put forth. Herta, that was for so the mean. Universe. <laughs> I just want to give more room for knowledge and inspiration to grow freely. That's enough. Leave if you don't want to be part of this. Go tell the other two yourself. Oh, and take your tech with you. I don't need it. I can go find Adrian Taylor or the red-nosed old man from Epsilon or even the Intelligentsia Guild. At least they won't quit halfway. Oh, she's sassy. Skrulum, we've known each other for a long time. This is the first time I feel that you're nothing but a piece of ice cold metal. Ooh, this is so awkward to walk into. <laughs> uh, are you okay? My apologies, madam. What's with her? Never expected to see that kind of expression on her face. Yeah, what happened? This all started with me. I was the one that brought up the request to end our academic collaboration. Well, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Herta or the project. The simulated universe is a great experiment, and Herta is a true genius. However, we have our differences when it comes down to our long-term vision for the future. These differences will often manifest into bias, and bias will get in the way of the formulation of knowledge. Deep down, I want to continue to believe in Herta. And the question is whether one should end a collaboration that no longer holds true to its original intent. From an objective standpoint, I should end it immediately. Are you worried about her mental state? A little, not at all. I'm more worried about the mental state of the researchers. Thank you for the humor. <laughs> it is good for tense moments like these. The emotions of organic life are like tides. It is my fault for not noticing the trajectory of the moon. Let Herta be alone for a while so she can calm her emotions. It'll be beneficial for our negotiations later as well. As for the simulated universe, if that's the reason you're here, maybe I can help in answering your questions. Explain what happened. Hmm. Search. Bonfire in the depths of the woods. A lone stone sword points to the stars. Punk Lord mentality. That is no ordinary curio, my friend. That is a love letter a galaxy ranger has written for the universe. Young madam, 
How much do you know huh? about Punk Lord? A Galaxy Ranger? I know a Galaxy Ranger. I'm a big fan. But I mean, I'm sure that Acheron is probably not the only Galaxy Ranger, right? I've heard of it, don't know much. Nobody, and I mean nobody, knows more about Punk Lord than I do. I'm gonna make some shit up. <laughs> <clears throat> Conversing with you is truly a delightful experience. <laughs> He's like, you are so stupid. It is a planet <laughs> so annoying. made of data and symbols. <laughs> the edges of reality and illusion are blurred in Punk Lord, as are its days and nights. An ether cartridge is a chip that Punk Lordian hackers use to edit reality. The ways through which a hacker perceives and modifies the world are recorded on the chip. It's a recording of the hacker's life and proof of their existence. The one on the space station belonged to someone truly legendary. He became a galaxy ranger by accident and spent many long years traveling among the stars. He encountered countless fascinating individuals and saw wonders witnessed by few. I have a question. I have a question. I just, it just hit me. Um, bootstrap. Boot, what is his name? Boot. It, boot. <laughs> boot. Boot Hill. <laughs> boot Hill is also a galaxy ranger, right? I, I fucking said bootstrap. What is wrong with me? I can't believe <laughs> What is wrong with me? Why can't I get these names right? Oh my god. Okay, it's Boot Boot Hill is a Galaxy Ranger, right? And I'm just like, right, like I same. I'm like is this so maybe we knew about Bo Boot Hill already. Like like just in secret. Well, not secret. Like you know what I mean? You gotta put yourself up by your boot hills. Okay, okay, this might be boot hill. This is really interesting. Many of the records and details recorded therein are beyond the knowledge of even the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild. That is why it became part of the massive. Isn't he? Isn't he trying? Doesn't he not like the universe. IPC too? Yes. No need to worry, my friend. The cartridge has never left the space station. It's as I said. It is a very important reference for the simulated universe. That is why its data has been extracted and added to the calculations of the universe model. Herta was probably impulsive and added the cartridge into the simulation without telling anyone, resulting in the item being listed as lost. Uh, so as a false alarm, I'm a little worried the person could have got forgotten into the office. I understand alarm. your concern. If the individual in question did indeed try to hack into Herta's office, then the simulated universe is undoubtedly her next target. As such, please allow me to offer my limited abilities to assist you with your investigation, madam. As you already know, the simulated universe will be shut down temporarily. It will remain shut until Herta and I come to a clear conclusion. Yes. This is the last chance to investigate the cartridge data. By way of apology for shutting down the simulated universe, I will use my abilities in the universe to provide you with what assistance I can. This is my recommendation. Please take your time to consider it. Hmm. Skrullum has a garter strap, does he? Not that. Paimon again. Who called him? <laughs> I just, I, I kept messing up his name. We might have actually known about him. I did this so long ago, so I didn't remember. Yeah, that's so interesting. They're probably talking about him. Um, People have expressed doubt that Acheron is a galaxy ranger at all. I mean, I can, I can get behind that, that she's just making that up. Uh... <laughs> Has a, any relation to bootstrap? Enjoy your lurk arc. I don't know. I think they're. I think they're talking about Boot Hill here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put on my tinfoil hat. I'm gonna say this is probably about Boot Hill. Well, madam, are you ready? Let's get going. Very well. Get. I will be sending you into the simulated universe using an alternative method. It might feel a little different than usual. 
This will help us quickly locate the cartridge in the vast sea of data. We'll start with this data link. Now, please prepare yourself for a deep dive with your consciousness. Okay. Oh, we have to have Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf is what? Um, Nihility is... Is, is she... I feel like someone said she's like a sustain. Is that true or no? She's a debuffer. Okay, then I made it up then. She's not she's not a sustain. Let's skip the formalities, Silver Wolf. I'm always game for putting on a show. Oh my god! Now I wish that I had Silver Wolf. Okay, sustain is only abundance and preservation. Okay, gotcha. I'm still I'm still learning about what paths are like what roles in combat. Young madam, I haven't figured that out right? yet. I'm fine. You are now inside or the data link of the ether committed cartridge. it to memory, rather. Look around and tell me what you discover. <clears throat> uh that hacker is right in front of me. Hacker. Oh. Oh. Conclusion. That is a holographic record that the simulated universe has created. In here, regardless of how large or small, all variables are saved, including outsider traces. You were right. The enemy's invasion has spread to the deepest parts of the simulated universe. They were only a hair away from the ether cartridge's data link. What we are seeing are the projections of what happened in those moments. Young madam, please stay still. Allow me to see what I can do with this record. Hey, you. Why are you staring at me? Uh, it speaks. I initiated the simulation flow. This is just a record of the past. She is not actually talking to you. Please listen and don't interrupt her. We may be able to find out more of what we need to know. First off, I'm not obsessed with it. On Punk Lord, the stories of the cartridge are no different from textbooks. I'm not interested in something that everybody already knows about. Secondly, it's not some kind of video game cartridge. It's an ether cartridge. It's the second pair of eyes, second brain, and second heart of the hacker. Hmm. Do you understand what that actually means? With that cartridge, if a guy went to a movie premiere and bought some mixed popcorn, you'd be able to know the flavor of the fourth kernel he picked out of the bucket. Oh. It's truly amazing. Lastly, I'm gonna say it again. I'm not obsessed with it. The reason I'm still rambling about it is to make sure that you know how amazing <laughs> it really is. Do you get it now? I'm not Asa? obsessed with it. I'm just rambling right, because I'm just on. trying to we portray how amazing quickly. it is. This place is different from the rest of the space station. We're on genius society turf. It is safe to assume She's that so two funny. people entered the simulated universe. Her and her companion. Interesting. Let's see what happened next. You are now taking the point of view of the companion. She will react to your behavior now. I love how she talks. It's great. I don't have welts. One hundred percent quick. You oh. took bait. Time for a <laughs> May as well kill them all. Okay, and then she, so she applies a debuff, right? I think people were saying. See, I think the big problem with me doing all of the companion quests now is that I know that every single character that I I do these for, I'm gonna be like, I want them. <laughs> I just know it. Commencing research. Memories are ever beneath the water lies an endless abyss. Oh wait, I don't need to do that. Relax. What do you want to know? Uh. Huh. More enemies. 
I I do. I I do want all of the characters, but it's gonna like make me want them in like fork in the road, huh? I got a, I want them now. Wanna pick one first? Thing Give and then maybe a try. maybe another thing too is that I'm a little nervous because I feel like I feel like some of these characters I'm gonna really really like and then I'm gonna start being silly. You know what I mean? Is there a character that I don't want? That's a really good question. I, I want everybody. Um, is she telling me to choose? Please, she is asking her companion to choose. The record will continue forward even if you don't take any action. Hmm. Wrong choice. The correct answer is the path on the right. Okay. The path on the right. Hmm, not what we're looking for. It's a bait signal. Ugh, why would Herta put something like this inside the simulated universe? Doesn't she find it annoying when she has to find something herself? Never mind, I miscalculated. Let's try another sector. It doesn't seem to be going well. She's actually on the correct path. She just needs to continue a little further. I trust that she too will realize this soon. I hope she doesn't worry, Sister. You seem to know her really well. We've met only once. Stellaron Hunter, Silver Wolf. We fought against one another before. Herta was there as well. She may have mentioned it to you. I recall that you won. I recall that she won. I recall that it was a draw. It was more like a test than a duel. She would attack, and I would defend. Neither of us gave it our all. She wasn't able to break through my defenses, and I wasn't able to stop her from leaving. Hmm. I never thought our next meeting would take place under these circumstances. I believe the continuation of our last encounter will soon arrive. What the? This was the right way all along. Ugh, Herta's got some psychological tactics going on. Seems like we can now continue forward. I would pull for Jing Lu and I have, uh, but if I have anything left after adventuring, I might use it to pull on Robin because of her element and path. Yeah, didn't Silver Wolf just have a rerun or something, or like it was fairly recent that she had one? Oh, back to the space station again. <gasps> a riddle? Where's the skip button? The skip button? Oh, I can't go that way. December, oh, okay, so yeah, it was really recently. She does sound very gremlin-y and I love it. I love it a whole lot. Double speed. Time to say bye. Boom. Oh, she applies a weakness at random. Skrillam's voice is so soothing. I do really like his voice. Break. What is she saying? 100% break? You took it. Stand still. Relax. Oh, this one, okay. Finally, almost there. <laughs> There's even a miniature Herta over here. <gasps> Look how tiny they both, they both are so funny to me. They're so small. They look very similar. <laughs> a little narcissistic, isn't she? The whole space station is filled with her face. Portraits, statues, even projections of herself. Oh my goodness. I was planning on adding a mustache for her, but the spray didn't work. The entire space station feels like it's made of paper, but her portrait is near indestructible. <laughs> She's talking about that portrait in the elevator room, no? 
Herta commissioned me to design an encryption tool for her. Seems she ended up using it on her portrait. She said she's almost at the destination. That's correct. The ether cartridge data is in the <clears> next <throat> room. Our pursuit is coming to an end. I have a strange feeling about this. I have a wonderful feeling about this. Yes. That incongruous feeling has persisted throughout this long pursuit. She came for the Stellaron, but showed a strong interest in the Curios. And just as we found out about the existence of the Aether Cartridge, she just so happened to show up in the simulated universe. I must admit, this feels less like a chase and more like a chance encounter. I recall a story about Punk Lord. It is said that graffiti is a special kind of symbol there. Hackers see reality as a magnificent game, an attempt to finish the stage we know as life. Whether it be for competition or for joy, they leave a trail in the places they visit. One symbol after another link up to become a long, long journey that writes the game of life. And would this ongoing affair not be part of such an endeavor? Perhaps this is all nothing more than a game she's decided to play with us. Hmm. In which case, let us accompany her till the end. Interesting. Can I talk to him? Wait, no. At least her portraits will, will be left intact. Yes. She's silly. She's very silly. I do. I like her as well. I only did one temple and I didn't really care if I got her or not. Wow. Trickier to time for a bug. <laughs> <laughs> this is double speed. This time is that's the fire. thing that like people mentioned, I think, before, that she comments on if you're on double speed or normal, right? That's that's a really cute little detail that they, they added to this game. Look, we found it. The ether cartridge is here and it's perfectly intact. But something's not right. There is an unwelcome third party here with us. If what we are seeing constitutes past images of Silver Wolf, then for her to have made it this far would have entailed the disappearance of the cartridge. We can only assume that the facts don't align with the theory. I believe that she was indeed able to hack into Herta's office, but she didn't stay there for very long. After all, even the best hacker wouldn't be able to find a specified target in the vast ocean of the simulated universe's data. Unless... Unless she had someone to guide her there. <laughs> it speaks. <laughs> you want to explain it to her first? I can see the confusion in her eyes. The final results are on the display table, young madam. Take a closer look if you wish. We have plenty of time left. I will answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so she's actually... You guessed correctly. The person that stands before you is tonight's starring role. She left herself a back door in the office, performed a proxy hack the moment you entered the simulated universe, and found a way to continue. I kind of figured that she was actually with us. I must say, she really is a masterful actor. Misdirection is always the most effective method. The graffiti was bait. The graffiti Excuse is me. like a two-way data tunnel. You can use it to retrace the trail she leaves behind, and she can monitor your progress by seeing which pieces of graffiti have disappeared. I fear she may well have had the whole thing planned out before hacking the space station. The graffiti and the back door were all in aid of honing in on just the right moment. Uh, you knew everything from the start? I'm sorry. Herta forbade me from disclosing any information beforehand. She made clear that knowledge would not be paramount to this operation, but rather the lack of it. Hmm. However, the way I see it, the most important elements were dedication and sincerity. The actions of Mr. Leonard drew the target right in. Well then, were you satisfied with this simulated universe journey? 
Miss Silver Wolf. Huh. You knew it all along, didn't you? I knew it would be hard to fool you. All that talk you were spouting along the way was meant for me. Oh! Wasn't it? it is a joy and an honor to have the opportunity to face off against you once again. Herta said that this cartridge would be able to lure in the biggest fishes in the universe. She was right. So, the business about shutting down the universe and the argument with Herta was all just an act? You did all that to lure me in? That is up to you to interpret. Herta and I have always been frank with one another. Sharp conversations of that nature happen on a regular basis. It wouldn't be fitting to call it an act. Hmm. Miss Silverwolf is truly a talented hacker. Not only did she calculate everything ahead of time, she has numerous variables and aces still to play. News of my sudden visit. She to looks very smug. I love it. <laughs> the only uncontrollable variable in her plan. And with my arrival came the nightmare of shutting down the simulated universe. That would have ruined her plans and all her preparations. Um, that's why she had to take the risk. That's why she had to take the opportunity before it was lost. You now know everything about this encounter. Everything? No, no. You're wrong about the most important part. You think I came here out of desperation, but I've been bursting with excitement this whole time. Do you know how happy I was when you showed up, Screwlum? I haven't had the thrill of a formidable opponent in such a long time. The Legion is nothing but a bunch of cavemen, and the IPC were a disappointment. Only the society has the talent to provide me with a fun challenge. Reality is nothing but a game. But what's the point of a game if it can't make you happy? An invitation letter and a challenge letter were sent to me from two geniuses. How could I not accept them? Would you have turned them down? You're confident you'll be able to get out of this in one piece. That's right. And I'm bringing this with me. Oh? When did you... Oh, a copy. You completed it while we were talking just now. Oh, she's so Why smart. Why would I entertain so much small talk? <laughs> You're not the only one stalling for time. I'm guessing that Herta is hiding in a corner somewhere, trying to pull off a reverse hack from where I hacked in. You, on the other hand, are responsible for taking me head on, just as you did last time. And I'm looking forward to it. How do you plan on stopping me this time? Are you going to turn the simulated universe into a black box? Or are you going to work with the IPC and put together a cross-galactic encirclement? Screw them. Will I be able to see your true strength this time? The long-awaited result will finally be determined. There will only be one victor today. Please. Let me have some fun this time, okay? My apologies, Miss Silverwolf, but none of what you are hoping for will be happening today. <laughs> he said, no, you thank you. <laughs> huh? Leave? But why? Aren't you trying to catch me? Don't you want to cuff me and exile me on some distant planet? Your creativity has proven interesting. However, I have nothing to do with your quarrel with the space station. Ergo, I won't stop you. Hmm. I'm gonna leave with this cartridge then. That's just a duplicate. Correction, not only is the one in your possession a duplicate, but so is the one here. The real curio was transferred elsewhere at the very beginning. Conclusion. You may share that data freely. Girl, I can't keep up. What if I attack the space station? Like these two smart people keep being like actually. It would have nothing <laughs> to do with me. But I must warn you, it is likely that someone would step forward to stop you. Then what if I were to destroy the simulated universe right now? <laughs> I'm sorry, but that simply isn't possible. Ether editing isn't capable of destroying an entire universe. Everyone hydrate, thank then? you. 
You guys went out of your way to put together this trap, but don't plan on doing anything at all? That's right. This way, the game that you so carefully orchestrated is now pointless, is it not? Oh. There's no point in a game if it's no longer fun. I feel like she's not going to like this, obviously. Silver Wolf, I know what you're after. The IPC's shackles won't be able to hold you, and jail is but another game to you. Herta and I <clears> came <throat> to an understanding. We will no longer enable you and give you what you need. <laughs> How boring. However, Herta felt that this would be too easy on you, and wanted to add something of her own. And that is why, in this very moment, she has reverse hacked you and located all your interactions. <laughs> She's reverse hacked you? A total of 76 accounts. A very impressive number. How would it be if the IPC were to freeze all of them? Including all of your game. Not records. the game records. What? Hey, hold on a minute. And she logged out. <laughs> How hasty of her. <sighs> Games are always fun in the eyes of a child, but to an adult, they are but one among many ways of solving a problem. It's about time we were on our way. Me swelling my head back and forth, like watching attach. Oh, truly, truly going for the Steam account. It's not my Steam library. She just wanted friends. No, they just kept going back and forth, and I'm like, what is happening? To have in this quest both trying to add smile to each other. Right. Like all these smart people just going back and forth. What is going on? Um <laughs> a flawless victory. Hope you got a glimpse of Herta's awesomeness, kiddo. Uh, was it all part of your plan? As expected, Madame Herta. Why make it so complicated? I'm gonna say this one. Hmm. Make sure you never forget about it. <laughs> I couldn't care less about what happened with the space station, but I will surely repay the favor tenfold to anyone who dares to taunt me. I already notified someone at the IPC to freeze all her accounts. <laughs> She's probably crying in front of her computer That's right so now. That's so mean! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, not that. Why does she have to? Why Thank she got to say she's probably people. crying in front of her, her computer right now? Like that's mean. Were a necessity to I do that. <laughs> do you have any other questions regarding this incident? Um, what is Silverwolf truly after? Her ultimate goal was always the ether cartridge, but she developed an alternative objective in challenging Herta and me in the process. All those complicated puzzles and unnecessary ploys. Nothing more than games, I'll wager. Will the space station be invaded again? If you are referring to the back doors Silver Wolf left behind, we have cleared out all of them, except for the one in the office. Don't worry. The space station is not as fragile as you think. Whether it's cosmic Hacking warfare Neopets. or the incident that just took place, <laughs> they're all within Herta's grand Her Genshin plan. account got bad. Herta's a mean girl. I want to ask about something Please else. Ask away. Other questions we got. Will you shut down the simulated universe? Certainly not. Although Madame Herta and I have our differences in terms of research direction, the simulated universe is our shared pursuit, and nothing will change that. On the contrary, I plan on staying here for a <laughs> Check while. Check yourself to before you wreck close, yourself. What kind of surprises the new branch of the universe has in store for me? What is the ultimate meaning of the existence of the universe? There is no one answer to that question, my friend. It holds a different meaning for everyone. To sentimental, organic life forms, it could be the first falling leaf in the change of seasons, or the marks carved onto someone through the passage of time. To the swarm that follows its instincts, it might be the sight of fresh meat in their compound eyes and the restless thirst for sustenance. And for me, perhaps the image of symbols woven together 
still able to move the heart, something great that you call emotions. Of course, I've also heard that the answer is nothing more than a two-digit number. I, I love that they added that. I love that they added that. That's so silly. What do you plan on having for dinner? A medium rare kettle steak, salt baked Kalia lemongrass, Herman compound milk, and a portion of fried rice prepared by a certain young Arlen's man fried rice. All I need is energy. The form that energy comes in is the same as it is for you. I would never forsake the delights of the culinary world in the interests of efficiency. Now, it is possible that my joints may need a little lubricant every now and again. I'm calling himself old. <laughs> That's all the well, questions I have. Madam, our destination may little differ, wink and a nudge from the English localization team. Yes. For our paths to cross. The pursuit of knowledge will always be the best driving force for trailblazing. I really like Screwlum. I like him a lot. So the reason Madame Herta wanted me to continue the investigation was to lure her out of hiding? That never crossed my mind. Did she know about the traps the hacker left in the space station from the very beginning? Uh, you were the most fitting person. You were the most fitting, I'm saying it. <laughs> she said I did a good job. <laughs> Can you believe it? I've just been acknowledged by Madame Herta. This is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know life. what? He's so valid. I don't have to worry about being fired anymore. Oh my God. This chapter has come to a conclusion. Come, let us close the final back door. Huh? You watch the image on the wall, so he just saw and that's the end of it. Ugh. It's gone. It's all gone. They seriously left nothing. Behind. Wait, I need a screenshot. We went too far this time. Too far. I actually love this. This is so cute. This is going in the folder. Okay. All right, all right. Stop with the tantrum. You're not a kid anymore. I am not throwing a tantrum. <laughs> uh huh. Anyway, what are you gonna do now, huh? Hack an IPC branch nearby and get your account. Do back? it. I dare you. Uh, if it were just one or two accounts, sure. I kind of overdid it this time. I lost basically everything. A branch office probably won't be enough. I'm gonna have to make a trip to Pierpoint. Oh, oh, you can. That's right. You but can hide the UI. Alone? That's the IPC's headquarters. Yep, just me. Why? Do you want to come with? I probably won't be able to. I'm in Elio's next script. Did you forget? Oh, right. That story doesn't sound like it fits me. You guys have fun. What does that mean? I hope you have a good time in Pierpoint as well. Don't worry. I've already got an idea. You see that cloud diner just two kilometers from here? A few temps from the building material logistics department just stepped in. I'm gonna go and become their friend. Getting a move on already? I would have thought you'd at least want to spend some time with that cartridge you were obsessed with. Didn't she say about. that she wasn't obsessed? I told you. I'm not obsessed with it. <laughs> Besides, there's fun to be had along the way. She starts running through the. Huh? Starlight. Ah! Elongates her shadow, illuminating the history of Punk Lord. Those who pen the legends, their vows remembered by the stars. The earliest role-playing gamer said games are about growth. The calm tactical strategy gamer said games are about the victories. The rebellious collaborative gamer said games are about encounters. The loving narrative gamer said games are about remembrance. This is me right here. This is me. And now the young cosmic adventure gamer, she said. A game is a game, and that's all there is to it. 
What? That was that was really cute. What the heck? Oh, <gasps> we can have Silver Wolf on the Express now. Yeah, that was really cute. You're still in the space right? I want to talk to you about something. Yep, still here. What is it? It's been a while since that incident, but I'm still very worried about the space station cybersecurity. I want to prepare while I can, and I've got an idea that I want to run past you. Let's talk about the details of space. I'm outside the office. Oh, is this is this my? What is this? Oh, it's a side quest. Okay. She's she's really cute. Yeah, Silver Wolf is really cool. That was really that was a really fun quest. Um. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, yeah, if anyone's wondering in what order I am playing through the companion quest, exclamation point HSR quests, you can see. Um, maybe, uh, would it be like beneficial for us to like highlight the ones that I've like done, Aiden? Or so people like when they go to it, they can see what I've already done. I don't know mm. if that, or like maybe just like put somewhere that I've already done it. Maybe I'm not sure if that would like help people so they know where we're at and what we've already done. Um, Space Station should have kept up with Windows updates if they're worried about security. Oh my God, you're so right. I think everyone should definitely keep up with their Windows updates. Yeah, yeah, you're correct, totally. 100%. <laughs> okay, so we did Silver Wolves. Next is Arlen's. Um How long is how long is Arlen's quest? Cuz I'm looking at the time and I'm like, can I knock it out in a short bit because we're going to dinner to go meet up with Kate. It's not very long. How how long do you think? But we're meeting up with Kate at 6.30. Check the train. Uh, I'm like, how do, okay, that's right. <laughs> like, how do I get back to the train? Arlen's is medium. Pom Pom is so cute, I can't. We got some leisure time. Don't forget to grab some sleep when you're done wandering about. I'm gonna get my rewards, because I think I got to, I'm 60 now. Forty minutes, but I think they exclude some combat stuff. So, ooh, okay. So then maybe we don't have time to do it then. Upgrade mission. Oh, I have to. I have to increase my equilibrium. Okay. Wait, what short thing? Oh, posture check. Thank you. Um, is that her? Wait, hold on. Let's see. Uh, redacted, the express is great across the board. It just lacks a nice and cozy place to game in peace. How about I sponsor the creation of such a space? We're all old friends after all, redacted. <laughs> Hello. You blinked your eyes and made sure the person who's just over with wasn't supposed to be there. What are you doing on the express? Wait. Donna, watch out, make a run for it. Strong sense of awareness for your companions. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Relax. I'm just dropping by for a visit. I was hacking through the dark regions of the inner astral network a while ago and happened to see a signal from the astral express. So I thought I'd stop by to check it out. What you see in front of you is a hologram, just as harmless as the whale holograms you see floating around the express. Here, see for yourself. She poked her stomach at the part of the finger that touched her clothes disappeared. Seeing is believing, right? If you're still Okay, I this, read that wrong because I thought it said that your clothes disappear. And I'm like, what? Into thin air. 
Until you turn it back on, of course. Yeah, I read that. I read that wrong. It did not say that your clothes disappear. What the actual fuck? Um, outlying snow plains. The Calyx Chris. Where? How do I get there? Staring at Himiko's chest while muttering interesting. It's really funny. Really? That's that's great. I love it. How do I get to... Go to the main Star Rail map. Okay, I'm there. Or wait, you mean here. Urelo. Then... Calyx is, Calyx is crimson. Wait. Outlying snow. Okay. And then where? This one? What am I looking for? Arf? The little arctic bear watches you with its head tilted, flapping its semicircular ears. Normally, wild animals are alert around unfamiliar things, but this little one doesn't seem to be bothered by your presence. Arf grew. Arf grew. The little bear calls out to you eagerly, flapping its short and round limbs. It seems as if it's asking for help. Who could reject an invitation from an adorable little arctic bear cub? You start to re approach. You gently pick up the little cub with both hands. It is lighter than you expected. A feeling of warmth spreads across your palms as your fingers are... What is going on? What? Guru, guru! The cub lets out a joyous call. There is something laying underneath where the bear was sat. Maybe it's a present for you? Cub seems to be in a great mood. Maybe try to be friending it. Tell a dad joke? This is your strong suit. You took the grand prize, the Astral Express dad joke contest you made in your, <laughs> yes. Tell a joke about work, tell a joke about ball, tell a joke about work. Why did the bear get fired? Because it always skipped work in the winter. Oh, because of, because like winter. Okay. <laughs> you realize you told the worst joke ever. Clearly, Arctic Bears and I were in the winter. Better luck next time. About a ball. What kind of ball does it bounce? Okay. These are bad. What about iron balls or steel balls or osmoni osmia osmium alloy balls? <laughs> Terrible, this is not the kind of joke someone of your talent should be telling. <laughs> snowman. How, how should you greet an old snowman? Hello, Mr. Water? These are the worst. I tell better jokes than this. The, be <laughs> the bear's like, what are you talking about? Dang, no reaction. This was clearly one of your proudest dad jokes. It seems that the Arctic bear is a species with high standards when it comes to dad jokes. It's a tough crowd. What? Sing a lullaby. <clears throat> you cleared your throat. It is time, your time to shine. <clears throat> oh no, your throat isn't feeling great today. Better take a lozenge. A refreshing, the bear is falling asleep. Moisting your throat and vocal cords. That feels great. No wonder Welt's always gobbling sweets. Now you're ready. It's right on the tip of your tongue. An adult should know how to be flexible, so you give up the few tall struggles. And just take out your phone and check. <laughs> As you're wrapped up in all this little bear, it's so cute. That's fine. You should save your wonderful singing voice for someone who really wants to hear it anyway. Feed it something. You pull out a large hazelnut from your pocket. It looks delicious. Grew, grew, grew. Why did you have a hazelnut in your pocket? That's not important. It's already in your hand now. The hazelnut soars through the air in a graceful arc. It's so cute! The cub cries out with happiness. 
if there was such a thing as a friendship level, that would have scored you some great points. Okay, I think that's all that I can do. The cub seems to have figured out your intentions. It shakes its head slightly as if to express reluctance. That was great, but I don't understand. What if it has a nut allergy? No, no more allergies. <laughs> uh, hi, Tarragon. We just finished um, Silver Wolf's companion quest. These were seen in the interlude. I don't remember. I know, I wish we could adopt. Posted the silver screenshot I was talking about on the Discord's Honkai pics. Um. <laughs> oh, she is, she is staring indeed. She's very much staring. That's very cute. I don't know what my dogs are doing. My dogs are doing something interesting. You're not supposed to be in here. No, 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 no. Okay, now they're wrestling. Um, they mentioned something about them being extinct. It might have been main story quest, I forget. Oh, I I don't remember. Yes, we did it. But I think we're going to stop here because from what Aiden said, it sounds like the next one on the list of companion missions, that one's going to be like an hour, an hour long or so. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to save it for tomorrow. Um, and then we will work through the rest of this list. So next up is going to be Arlen's and then Asta. And then after that, we're moving on to Bellabog. So um, just a heads up for anyone that is uh, wondering. Wondering? <laughs> anyone that is uh, curious about what, what we're going to be doing next tomorrow. So... Um, they represented the perseverance of the people of Bellabog to Topaz. Oh. Oh, okay. That sounds familiar. But thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I hope everyone had a fun time. Thank you all so much for going on a lore dive with me. Tomorrow, the poster board will be here. Um, and and we will set it up and we will start we were, we will start our deep dive into things. We'll start writing stuff down i'm really excited uh i think we'll we'll start um maybe writing some stuff down for Panacone as well for like speculating about what's going to happen in 2.1 i think that'll be really fun to do tomorrow so and then of course we'll continue companion missions and stuff so thank you all again for being here if you're new and you enjoyed make sure to follow the stream um if you've already followed the stream then you can also follow me on twitter mm -hmm. i am legend of Florian on twitter um i'm Lori magistus on tiktok and also on instagram um, and you can follow, subscribe to me on YouTube, my two YouTube channels, my VODs channel, and my main channel where all of my reactions are and my playthroughs of uh, Honkai Star Rail um, and other games and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, join our Discord if you want to have um, some really awesome discussions about Honkai Star Rail, if you want to talk about video games in general, Genshin, um, we've got a Love and Deep Space thread. Um, Otome's anime. We do anime nights every Thursday. Um, come join us in Discord. We'd love to have you. Everyone's welcome. Uh, and yeah, that is it. Um, I wonder if we should do. Let's do. It's been a little bit since I've done a raid, so we'll do a raid. Hmm. Should we, I think we're gonna do, let's raid, let, I think it's been a little bit since we've raided Men's Leaf. Let's go raid Men's Leaf. She's really sweet. If y'all uh, do anything Genshin related, then you've probably heard of her. She does a lot of like lore deep dives and she's just a sweetheart. So we're gonna go raid Min's Leaf. Um, we're gonna go do, hi, hello. We'll use Lore Wave along with that. Um, 
And yeah, that's our recall. Yeah, hi, hello. And then Lorewave, if you are a sub, if you're not a sub, feel free to use whatever emote you want or don't use an emote, whatever works. But hi, hello will be what we are gonna be using when we go in there. Um, once again, thank you all so much for being here. I will see y'all tomorrow for another stream um, starting around 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm hoping to actually be on time tomorrow because I would love to like get started early and start like talking about everything early and you know, all of that. Um, and yeah, thank you again. I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.